pressure up the center and a little bit on the edge as well, but he was able to get it off. Like them, that might be a, a young offensive line, but they average 285 across the line, so they might be young, but they're pretty, uh, they're pretty bulky. They, they should be able to stand there and hold their own. Gendron, the receiver, third-year player. Three receivers to the short side. Polk is offset to the left of Jansen. Empty backfield. Mustangs just rushing four. There's a completion. Maxime Malenfant with the catch. Goes up the sideline. Pushed out of bounds. It's going to be maybe two, two yards short. It'll be second and short as they approach midfield. Yeah, it looked like Western came out with a 30 front on that one and added into the box uh, on the line from a linebacker. We haven't seen that uh, a lot this season. Uh, you know, Coach Gleason mentioned that they were going to stay away from the 30 this year, but here they come, coming out with it, expecting them to pass, I guess. Last week we saw them in a 50 front on a couple of occasions. So second and short, Polk is the lone running back. Taking the handoff, looking for room off tackle right, and he's through the line, and there goes Polk. Down to the 35-30, 25-20, Amlicar, Polk into the end zone. Touchdown, GGs. Well, that was a quick strike. Just I, the fourth play of the game. I don't think Western was expecting that. They ran a great yak play, which means that wide receiver, the slot back, came across the line of scrimmage, came across the formation, sorry, and whacked the defensive end, which was enough to open that gap for the running back to hit through. The linebacker couldn't get to the tackle, and he was in the open field by the time Wesson knew what was going on. So just watching Polk on that, just take the handoff. Little zone scheme, Todd, is that to the uh, left? And a nice play, and Polk shows a little breakaway speed. Once he got through that first line, no one touched him. Yeah, he pulled away from the defense very quickly. The DBs even, who are supposed to be the fastest guys on the field, could not get to him, and he was got off to the races. So for the GGs, the exact start Belfoy would wanted. There's seven points. Settle your team down. Quiet the crowd. Perfect start for the GGs. Yeah, that's certainly a great start. That's exactly what you would want to start, especially for a young quarterback. You know, this sort of helps to settle the team down, helps to give them a little bit of momentum as well on their sideline, uh, their offense, and now it gives their defense a little bit of energy to come out and try and stop Western's offense. So the Mustang starting running back duo, Edwards and Yazbek, will be back to return. Good returner, Daniel Kabongo, who had a key play last week on the Mustangs' game-winning drive, was a game-time decision. And Kabongo, the second-year player out of Calgary, will not be dressed. We saw him warm up. We saw him go through mm -hmm. a number of drills, but the coaching staff decided it wasn't. Uh, he wasn't up to uh, game readiness. And Kabongo, who brings a little bit of dynamism, if you will, to the return game this year. Uh, not dressed for this. So, it is Edwards and Yazbek who are back deep. Zach Copeland, second year kicker, has it teed up on the 45. Mustangs trailing 7 nothing. just two and a half minutes into this game. So, Copeland high, sends Yazbek back to his two with the wind at his back. Yazbek looking for a crease up the left side, bounces outside, side shuffles, Lowers his shoulder, and the 25 is where the Mustangs and Evan Hillock will start their first drive. Yeah, I think no doubt they're going to miss Kabongo this week. I mean, Edwards is certainly a good returner and, and definitely a good blocker in that wedge when they're trying to return, but you, you want to minimize your shots to your starting running back as much as possible. So he not only does he offer some dynamics, but he also provides a bit of a, a rest for your number one ball carrier. So Evan Hillock... OUA All-Star last year, off to a great start again this year. He is the league's leading passer, according to efficiency. He's got Keon Edwards in the backfield, and Moss and Jamal isolated out to his right. First snap a little high. He's able to corral it. Edwards looking to bounce outside, and then he's strung out and maybe loses a yard. Good work by the offensive defense, oh, Ottawa's defensive line. Never let Edwards turn the corner. Nope. And interesting, they ran a very similar play to what uh, Ottawa just ran to score their touchdown with that yak play inside zone, but they didn't get as many yards as Ottawa got. There's your starting backs with Edwards, Evan Hillock, and Craig Coleman is their lead blocker, number 35. Look for a lot of Coleman today. So Hillock under pressure, and he overthrows Coleman, leaking out of the backfield. And the Mustangs will have a two and out to start the game. And so the GGs, not only successful offensively, get exactly what they wanted defensively as Hillock heads off to the sideline. 
Yeah, I tell you what, if uh, Hillock had a little bit more time to throw that, they had a receiver sort of crossing the, uh, the, the formation and was into the open field. If he had time to, to throw that ball there, it would have been off to the races. But uh, Ottawa put good pressure on the Western offense there. So here's A.J. Williamson in to punt. Under some pressure, gets it off. A wobbler off the side of his foot. Bouncing, takes it angled out of bounds, and it works out well for the Mustangs. So A.J. Williamson didn't get all of it, but directionalized it well and out of bounds. However, Ottawa with decent field position as they start this drive with Jansen at their 43. Yeah, that was a nice safe kick, whether it was intended or not. I mean, they give the Western defense good field position and don't allow Ottawa to have a return to, to, to gain some of that field position back. So they started a decent spot at the 43-yard line. So Josh Jansen with Polk behind him, offset now to the right. Three receivers to his left. Jansen sends him in motion. Heads it off to Polk, bounces it outside, cuts it up. Amlikar Polk with a nice cut. And he has about five yards on that first down carry. Yeah, they're trying to run inside zone there. Western did a good job clogging that one up, so he ended up cutting it back against the grain and getting around the outside of the far edge, the field side of the line. The offensive tackle had a good block and a good seal on the defensive end. He was able to pick up a few yards the long way. Nice cut by Polk on that play planted his foot and went north-south after he was able to get around the end. So Polk is offset from the backfield to the right of Jansen. He's got three receivers to his left. That's the big field. Polk now switches sides. Mustangs just bring in a little extra pressure. Jansen over the middle. Ooh, it's going to be close, and it looks like he's got the completion. That was Kerwin Gwist, Geist, pardon me, with the catch. Looks like it's five and a half yards when they needed five. And they're going to move the sticks. It's a first down for Ottawa. Jensen showing poise early on in this game. Absolutely. That was a great catch over the middle of the field, a very athletic catch. He was off balance. He was going down. He was able to two-hand it before he hit the turf. So that was an important catch for Ottawa. So as they approach midfield, four receivers to the right for Jansen. Poke in the backfield, taking the handoff, cutting off to the right, and nowhere to go. Nice play by Western's defense. They were able to snuff that out. He actually had a bit of a running back, had a bit of a gap there he could have shot through, but he didn't find it in time before the purple uh, demon sort of came in and, 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 and swallowed him up. So we talked in the pregame about the impact, number 95, playing his first game for Western, transferring for Mac, Chinadu Ezeonwure, and he made his first play tackle for, well, officially not a loss, but a half-yard gain. So nice work by Chine. Second and about nine. Four receivers to the left. Jansen with the snap, looking left all the way. Has time. Steps up out of the pocket. Now looking to run. Jansen safely slides. Only gets about three yards. So Ottawa will have to punt. Based upon that one limited sample set, I would say... Jansen not exactly fleet of foot. No, no, and I'm not sure what broke down there because he had two receivers that were wide open in the uh, on the underneath level. Uh, they ended up coming close to each other, uh, but he just couldn't find them in time, and I think he got flushed out and wasn't sure what to do, so it took off and was had to slide so he didn't get hurt. You can't afford to get hurt as a thor the third quarterback. No. So Campbell Fair with the punt. There's Savon Magne-Jones on the return, deep from his own end. Magne-Jones has room down the sideline. Savon Magne-Jones steps out of bounds. Great return over 30 yards. Savon Magne-Jones, the all-Canadian for a couple of years with the game-winning touchdown last week, puts his imprint on this game already. Yeah, he's a lot of fun to watch, man. He is dynamic. When he gets going, he can make you miss. He can explode from 0 to 60 in no time. And, uh, and he's tough to tackle. He's not a big guy. So he can get underneath a lot of these big guys and just make people miss. So that was a fun, dynamic return. Hopefully injects a little bit of life into Western's offense here. So the Mustangs will start on their 41-yard line. Hillock was 0 for 1 on that first drive, just could not connect with Coleman out in the flats. Yazbek in the backfield. There's Hillock quickly to the outside. There's Robertson, who leads the OUA in touchdowns with six already. Had one last week. So Robertson picks up, let's make it eight. It'll be second down and short. Ball will be on the 49-yard line. 
Yeah, that was a nice play. The, uh, Ottawa's defense was sitting in the zone. They did a nice job finding the uh, the empty zone there, and Hillock had time to throw it to him. So a little bit more what we're used to seeing from Western's offense. So Coleman is the up back, just about one yard behind the line. Yazbek is the deep back. Receivers go in motion. Yazbek taking the handoff, wheeling it off, tackle right, puts his head down, but gets the first down. Know where the sticks are, got the first down, nothing more. Yeah, he just got to that boundary edge where he had a little bit of room to run, nothing inside, so he was just enough to get the five yards, get the first down, and move the sticks. On a first down play, you may see him want to gamble, try to outrun a guy to the end, but on a second down play where you know where the line of scrimmage is, he just wanted to move the sticks. So first and ten, receivers in motion, Yazbek on the carry. Good yard after first contact. Yazbek was hit yeah. about one or two yards in and then dragged the defender for about four more. Keanu Yazbek, nice run on first down. Yazbek is a great running back. We know what Keon Edwards give us, but Ke uh, but uh, Yazbek is such an explosive, strong, dynamic runner, and he averages 11.9 yards a carry this season. So he's always good for a big play. So second and five again. Receivers go in motion. Robertson back in the backfield. Yazbek stutter steps, puts his shoulder down, and we're going to have our first decision of the game. They got to the 49, maybe the 49 and a half. They needed to get to the 48. So Edwards comes in for Yazbek, and the Mustangs on yep. third down will go for it. I like this decision. The field position's great. You got a little bit of momentum, and, you know, you have got to prove – to yourselves and to your offense that you believe in them. Let them go on third and two and get that first down. This Sandro is sort of an identity Perini, play. One of the H-backs now in the tight end position. Coleman, the up back. Hillock has Edwards behind him. Edwards with the handoff. Edwards puts his shoulder down. He's through. Edwards carries a couple of tacklers, making a gain of eight, no doubt about it, as the Mustangs get to the 40-yard line of Ottawa. Nice job by Weston's offensive line to open up a big lane down the middle of the field, right down the hash that he was able to carry that ball for. He didn't even have to work for that first down, but he worked for some yards after the first down, which is exactly what they knew they could nice do. Nice little tunnel there. Yeah, yeah. For Edwards to go. The Red through. Sea parted on that one, or the White Sea, if you will. Ottawa bringing pressure from the backside. Picked up well. There's Braden Mazzari, the receiver. S make it 12 yards and a first down. Just coming up under five and a half minutes to play in this first quarter. Ottawa with a touchdown on their first drive, lead Western 7-0. Lead Western but the Mustangs are driving down to the 28. One of the points of emphasis, Todd, this week was converting in the red zone. Thought they left a lot of points on the board last week against Queens, according to their coaching staff. Yeah, I think they felt like they've done that all season, so let's see if they can improve that today. Edwards on the handoff, stutter steps out to the outside. Nice cut by Edwards, good tackle. In the Ottawa secondary, it's going to be a gain, though, of approximately six, make it seven yards, and it'll be second down and three. And Western's starting to move now, going no huddle and just trying to move and keep momentum going, keep uh, Ottawa's defense unable to huddle and get a call in. Yazbek offset to the right, taking the half. No, play action. There's a quick hitter, Missouri with the catch. There's Missouri weaving his way. In under the 10, he's knocked out of bounds. The referee marks it at about the seven yard line. Nice, quick to the outside. Braden Masseri, we know he, what he can do on punt returns, just using that talent on a short little screen pass. Yeah, now we know that one of Ottawa's corners is injured this week, so they had to move their, their field side to boundary and bring in a new field side corner. So, you know, they're testing the edges a little bit today to see what, uh, what they can do to find a mismatch. So Jamal comes in motion. First down from the seven. Hillock back to pass. Quickly to the outside. Savon Magne jones touchdown. There we go. The All-Canadian scored the last one last week, the first one this week. May get some bookends for Savon Magne jones as Evan Hillock on an easy pitch and catch in the Mustangs with their first touchdown, 3.58 to play in this first quarter. So it looks like Western's done exactly what they set out to do today, and that is to be more proficient and, uh, and effective in the red zone. And that momentum they were creating with the no huddle, just moving, 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 all right, was a nice decision for them to make. So Garrity with the extra point, and the Mustangs have tied this homecoming game at seven apiece, 3.58 to play in this first quarter. You're watching Mustangs Football on OUA TV. Listen, you're more than your successes. 
You're more than your failures. Everything you got. You're the work. It's dirty work. It's work that hurts. Work that defines you. It's that fire that burns inside you. One more. Be you. It's always been you. Welcome back. Mustang football on OUA TV and Western with their first major. Nice little drive, I believe 69 yards, Todd. It started with a good punt return from Savon Magnet Jones from inside his 10 yard line to the 41. And then to cap it off, it was Savon Magnet Jones, seven yard reception from Evan Hillick and the Mustangs are on the board. Ooh, borderline. The Mustangs are going to be offside. There's Suleiman Kamara from his goal line, looking for room. Oh, and makes one man miss, but able to survive out to the 14. Oh, the Mustangs had a great opportunity to pin Ottawa inside their 10-yard line. Suleiman Kamara, the returner, able to get it out to the 14. So this is the worst starting field position for Ottawa's three possessions and their rookie quarterback, Josh Jansen. That ball was kicked so deep that Western's coverage team had a hard time getting down that far to try and keep him pinned in the end zone. And then two Mustangs missed on the outside leg of, uh, of the returner. So he was able to get a few extra yards. But still, a good starting spot for Western's defense on the 14. So here's Jansen with Polk, who had an early touchdown to get Ottawa's score. Four receivers to the right. Play action. Jansen rolling out, looking down the middle, has his receiver. Caught at the 30, turns up at the 35, make it down to the 38. Robin Couliode looks to be the receiver. First-year player, I believe, born in France. Ottawa has three players, Todd, that are born in France. Uh, seems the international appeal of football well that and it's a french university so you get a lot of canadians from across the country going there for the french program especially if you're immersion you get a lot of cjep kids obviously and only naturally you get some natural french athletes because they play football over there so there you see quiode on a nice deep hook as jansen gets outside rolling on the pocket three receivers to the left poke on the handoff looking for room up the middle oh. once again nice tackle Chinadu. But Eze on worry just throws Poke down. However, not after a gain of five yards. You know, again, like you said to your point, that adds a nice little element to the defensive line, having him in, in there. That allows you to run this 43 because he seems to be controlling the middle of that field very well. So there we see Fournier is the blocking back. Polk is the primary carrier. And Lecondro is hurt. And this is why we see Josh Jansen, 15, not 17, as the quarterback today. So receivers in motion. Western showing pressure off the edge. Jansen drops it off on the crossing pattern as his receiver has a first down. So well timed on the crossing pattern. And that's Gendron with his second catch of the day. And they're approaching midfield. And it looks like we had a bit of some crossing routes over the middle of the field. And Western's... Uh, Defensive back number 22, Jordan Murphy, is able to get the tackle, trying to get the rip of the ball as well, but not able to pull it out. Jansen off to a great start. Five of five. So Polk offset to the right. First and 10. Receivers in motion. Jansen back to pass. Looking to go high to the outside. Ball is caught. Gain of about 16. Jansen looks spectacular in his first action of OUA. Yeah. 
Welcome to Ontario Football, uh, Josh Jans or Josh Jans from Chilliwack, we BC. So far, standing in there, looking very proficient in his passing accuracy, and his offensive line's doing a good job, giving him some time to throw as well. So look at this from one one hash mark to the far sidelines on a dot. That's a pro pass. That's a long throw. So first and 10 GGs as they're back in Mustang territory. Receivers go in motion, poke the hand off, looking to go off tackle right, has a crease, and Polk picks up about six on the first down carry. Yeah, running to the field side, they were able to uh, seal the defensive end and get that ball to the edge and have a bit of room to run before he's taken down by Western defenders. Maybe a little bit of hold there on the edge, but uh, nonetheless, it wasn't called, so there's no hold officially. So Polk is offset to the right. Jansen has two receivers to his left. That's the short field. They go in motion. Play action. And he's behind the receiver. It's the first misconnection for Josh Jansen. One of the things I'm noticing from Jansen is read it, throw it. And for the most part, his receivers have been open. Not quite sure he had an open receiver, but they're almost telling Jansen, throw it, target Go for your first read here. Yeah, and that last pass, they had a little slant route, which is one of the more dangerous routes to have to cover because it's so quick and it's the shortest pass, but not effective and uh, didn't get that one in the hands. So here's Campbell Fair, fifth-year kicker, who seems to have been around the OUA forever, Todd. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is up, and Fair delivers three points for the GGs. And Ottawa, on the final play of the first quarter, goes up 10-7. to seven. Second quarter action coming up next with the GGs over the Mustangs 10-7 and you're watching Mustangs football on OUA TV. Second quarter about to get underway. Ottawa leading the Mustangs 10-7 in this homecoming game. Scored on their first drive, had a field goal on their last one, and it's Savon Magne jones with a touchdown for the Mustangs. First down, there's Keon Edwards looking for room, off tackle left. Loses his footing, but pitches forward for about four yards on the first down. It will be second and about five and a half. Looking back on the first quarter, Tommy, do you think Josh Jansen is happy to know that he doubled uh, Evan Hillock's uh, passing yards as a first-time thrower? Not bad. Six to seven for 81 yards. So second and five. Oh, early snap. Western under pressure. No call. And the center believed that's just a miscommunication. You're setting your quarterback up for demolition. You have to be sure that it's going to be offside. So let's see the replay. Boy, that's a terrible miscommunication between center and quarterback. Yeah, and what's, uh, what's ironic is it looked like the uh, Ottawa defensive line was in a little bit of disarray, and perhaps that was enough to confuse Western's offensive line. 
and uh, allowed uh, not one but two defensive pass rushers in to lay a wallop on Hillock. Alex Berwick, the center that time, trying to catch Ottawa napping, but Evan Hillock was unaware that the snap was coming early. Here's A.J. Williamson with his second punt of the game. They're in. They hit him. He says no. And so the return man for Ottawa, good field position for the GG. So Ottawa not intimidated by the Mustangs' undefeated record. They themselves are at 2-1 and one and have had the better part of play here in this game. Ottawa leading 10-7, 13 and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. I can tell you what, I don't think Coach Marshall is going to be happy with, one, the fact that three guys almost got to that ball, but two, that it looked like, it appeared as though one of the Ottawa rushers was uh, touched off on the kicker and there was no penalty thrown. I'm sure Coach Marshall will be given some words on the sideline. Quickly looking around the OUA, Guelph is leading York 28-0 and Carlton on top of Toronto 7-0. No score in the laurier Mac game. So here's Jansen, back to pass on first down, dumps it over to his... Slot back, Jean Dron hits his third catch of the first half, and Jean Dron is able to get four yards, second and six for the GGs. I, I got to say, Ottawa's doing a great job protecting uh, their quarterback and allowing him time to see the field with some, you know, with a little less pressure and getting that ball into his targets. They, uh, they're, they're protecting him well. We've seen Jansen roll out a couple occasions, but most of it's quick set. Mm -hmm. Make a decision, throw the ball. It'll be second down and six. Polk, offset to the left. Western bringing pressure up the middle. Well picked up by the GGs. Oh, deflected at the line. Good work. Referee's going to throw a flag. He didn't understand that it was tipped. So. Yeah, the Western defender was draped over the back of the receiver as he was coming back for that, uh, for that pass. He was running a little uh, hook route and coming back. And the Western, DB, Western defensive back mind you, was in great position, just a little too aggressive over his back, and that got called. That so, was after the tip from the defensive line, however. So we heard it in the crowd, and you can hear the mumblings. The ball was tipped, but that is a NFL, U.S. rule. That's right. Not a Canadian rule. So although it wasn't enough yards, it's an automatic first down. So first down for the GGs. They'll have the ball on the right hash of the Mustangs' 44-yard line. 10-7, scored on their first possession with an Amlicar poke, 55-yard touchdown, then added a field goal on the last possession. Receivers go in motion. Poke on the handoff, bounces it outside. So loss on the play. However, there was offside. What do you prefer, first and 15, second and 11? I'm thinking if I'm coaching staff, I go second and 11. Uh, I kind of like first and 15. It gives you a little bit more opportunity to open up your playbook, but. I'm talking defense. So second and 11, Mustangs will decline the penalty. So Polk, a loss of one on the play. Three receivers to Jansen's left. Polk is the lone back. Mustangs don't look to be showing any pressure. Just rushing three. Trying to get Jansen to, Jansen rolling out. Jansen looking for room. Jansen slides. Flag on the play. There's going to be a hold. So Mustangs just rushing three and able to get enough pressure that a hold is called. So good work by the Mustangs enticing a holding call, and they're going to push him back. And Josh Jansen was running for his life there, not really realizing that it had a big purple body chasing after him from behind. He was almost a little bit late going down on that play. We saw a late hit last week against Max Nixon in Queens, and it's one of those things, when the quarterback gets out of the pocket, right, he doesn't. He does still have those special rules, especially if he, if he initiates a slide, and it was a late initiation, but Nixon hit him after he hit the ground and the Mustangs were tacked on 15 yards, putting Queens in a good position. And that can be a killer. So second and 21, back on their side of the field. Hand off to Polk on the draw. Polk escapes the first tackler, but not the second, not the third. There's a flag, flag on the far side. 
Might nice job by Riley, Riley McLeod, or McLeod sorry, at linebacker, getting off of his block to come over and uh, make that tackle. One so McLeod Western sheds the first one. Mm -hmm. No flag on the play. The Kevin Mickleborough, the referee today, it's his 250th OUA game. That is a lot of football games. We were trying to do the math on how many years that would be, and we figure probably 25 to 27 years of football refereeing. So congratulations to him on this momentous day. So Copeland. Pardon me. Fair back to punt. High using the wind, drifting Magne Jones back to his five-yard line, looking for room up the sidelines. And Savon tackled after not much of a return. He's forced out at about the 13-yard line. So nice punt from Campbell Fair. And the Mustangs will start from deep in their own end. They're basically starting from the same spot as Ottawa started to start the quarter. Uh, on the 13-yard line. Let's see what Western can do to get some momentum going here on this series. Looks like Hillock's back out and uh, running out, and he looks like he's ready to go. A little uh, concern after the last offensive play the uh, previous series. So Yazbek is the deep back. 13 minutes, pardon me, 11 minutes to play in this first half. Ottawa leads 10-7. Hillock with receivers in motion. Play action. Looking for his man down sure. the middle. Savon Magne-Jones. What great timing. Oh. Threw the ball before Magne Jones made his break. Magne Jones with terrific hand-eye coordination. <laughs> when that, that is amazing catch. When that ball was in the air, I'm like, turn around, turn around, turn around. I wasn't sure he was going to turn around. I thought I was going to hit him off the helmet. And he turned around at the last second. And to have the wherewithal to get those hands up with the sun in your eyes was impressive. First down from the 30. Ottawa bringing pressure. On the sweep, Magne Jones. Thrown down at about the 34, gain of four on the play. Magne Jones trying to get him involved in all aspects. We've seen some returns. We've seen some receptions for a touchdown. Now on the run action. A little bit of jet sweep here, Todd. Yeah, yeah, a little uh, a little whip, they call it, the W sweep. And, uh, you know, they toss it forward a little bit there so that uh, it's a forward pass in case anything goes wrong. Haven't seen Moss and Jamal targeted so far today. No. Masseri goes in motion, high snap. Hillick with time, and he's got Braden Masseri on the cross. And Masseri has the catch at the 48-yard line. Nice quick hitter as Masseri came down with the motion, carried through on the under, and Hillick hit him perfectly in stride. Yeah, right in front of linebacker 33, Mark Rondow. Just able to get past him, just past the, uh, the, the defender for the catch, and he's able to run for a few yards. Nice play. First and 10 on the 49-yard line. Yazbek offset to the right. Ottawa showing pressure, coming under. Hillock gets it off quickly. And then Moss and Jamal goes low with the catch. He's got five yards on the play. Ottawa really bringing numbers. Trying to, I think, trying to guess down and distance, thinking the Mustangs are likely to run on first down. Yeah, they brought six at least on that play uh, to, to pressure the quarterback. Uh, four linemen plus two linebackers. They, they seven, brought seven on eight. that one. The safety came late. Yeah, Hillock was able to get that off, and a great catch by number four. Jamal. So second down, Yazbek cut down as he crosses midfield. Mustangs are going to be about a yard short. Have to get to the 51-yard line. Let's see where the referee marks it. About at the 52, just shy of the 52. And I think we so, know that they're going to go for this one. So Yazbek comes out. Edwards comes in. Coleman is the blocking back. I see Perini out. I think that's Perini on the end as well. Ottawa bringing forward pressure. Edwards on the carry. Edwards through. Edwards has a first down. He keeps chugging along. Kean Edwards with a gain of five. And the Mustangs will have a first down. I tell you what, Edwards got a leg workout on that carry. He was carrying two big boys, two linemen on his back uh, for the additional three yards. Did I just hear a Larry right there? I tell you what. I'll tell you what. This field, of course, named in honor of two great coaches here for the Mustangs in history. This is Haler Samodiak Memorial Field. And we see an Ottawa player down, though, right now. Looks like uh, Desir is down on the ground. And Ottawa with eight 
defensive lineman. So maybe Desir out of the rotation. The thing about, uh, I'll say about Ottawa, Western's dressing nine offensive linemen. Ottawa's only dressing seven. So here you see Edwards through the line. And Desir looked like he just got rolled up at the end there. Was yeah. he making the tackle? Yeah, it looks like, or maybe number 35, one of his linebackers, or one of his linebackers, um, that's Braden Kruge, may have rolled up on his ankle or his knee. Uh, he was one of the uh, two or three bodies that Edwards, Edwards was carrying downfield. So, oh, it looks like he maybe has a cramp in the calf. Maybe a little Charlie horse getting rolled up on there. They're stretching him out now. Looks like he's getting up. Big man number 95, Samuel Desir, walking off to the sideline. So, they'll be happy to see him walking off. So, Sam Desir, six foot, 315. Run stopper. There's Evan Hillick walking back to the huddle after getting instructions from the offensive coaching staff. It's first and 10 for the Mustangs. Scored on their second possession, seven yard connection between Hillick and Savon Magnay Jones after a nice drive downfield. Edwards lines up right behind Hillick, eight yards deep in the backfield. Magnay Jones is isolated to the right. Edwards on the carry. There's a crease up the middle. Keon Edwards busts it down to the 30-yard line. Nice run by Keon Edwards. Great blocking up front. Great blocking up front. You know, you sort of run that inside zone, that inside zone, that inside zone all day, and you just wait for that one time you get one busted. Ottawa had one earlier on, and they scored the touchdown on, and there's a good one for Keon Edwards to get a, first, a big first down. And again, so, great job blocking by the offensive line there. So Phil Jeffs, the starting right tackle, he's limping off. We're starting to see a little bit of attrition happening between these lines. So Phil Jeffs comes off. He'll be attended to. I believe Reed Cloutier. We'll, well, you wonder, the, the weather's pretty nice today. The weather is warm. It's, uh, it's dry. And, and these guys are a little sweatier than they're used to being this time of year. So maybe those are having some effects on muscles. So Reed Cloutier, first year tackle. Taking the position of Phil Jeffs. First down, Western. Jamal on the little bit of the bump. Oh, keeps his feet nicely. Moss and Jamal bounces off one. And with second effort, is close to a first down. Little bit of the volleyball play. Yep. And Moss and Jamal, when you watch this replay, there's a GG completely fooled on this, Todd. Yeah, and there's sort of a very similar play to what Ottawa ran, just a that sort of little whip, and they just shovel it forward to him. But he, uh, he ping-ponged off about three guys to get those yards. So... He, uh, Louis you know, Prince, the first-year defensive end, made that hard step inside, thinking Jamal was going to cut it up, and Moss and Jamal. So here it is. Second down and one. Rancourt up under center. Rancourt's got room around the end. Jerome Rancourt into the end zone. Touchdown. Jerome Rancourt from 21 yards. 22 officially, and Rancourt with his first rushing touchdown. I can assure you, Rank, when Rancourt came on the, the field, they were not expecting he was going to take the ball and ramble that many yards on the outside into the end zone. When you bring that big body on, and he is a big quarterback, you're thinking he's just going to try and sneak it over the line for a first down. Yep, instead, he rumbles it in for a big touchdown and a steal of the lead. So Rancourt usually comes in in short yardage situations. The second year quarterback usually takes it and plunges up the middle. I mean, his body length is two yards. Well, at 6'5", 248 pounds, again, you're not expecting to track me from that guy, but he can move pretty good for a large fellow. He moved extremely well. <laughs> 22 well. yards on the carry by far. Rancourt's longest of the season, and it gives the Mustangs a 14-10 lead. 6-14 to play in this first half. So Ottawa got off to a great start, added a field goal in the first quarter, but the Mustangs with now two touchdowns have retaken or have taken the lead for the first time. Rancourt. Savon Magne Jones is an obvious choice for a touchdown. 
Jerome Rancourt, not so much on your pick list, Todd, <laughs> if I'm thinking who's going to score for the Mustangs. Maybe they found a new position for that guy. Could you imagine a corner being out on that edge, watching him lumbering at you? So Garrity. All the way down to the goal line. Good coverage Ooh. by the Mustangs. And they swamp the returner down to the 15-yard line. You can tell when things go well for a team based upon their special teams play. The barometer of a team's attitude is evident in special teams. Let me quote once again Larry Haler on that, oh. Todd. When you can make a big stuff on a special team like kickoff, that is a great energy booster for your team. It gets the crowd hyped, it gets the sideline hyped, and hopefully now with the defense facing off against the offense here on the 15-yard uh, line, it's going to be a big boost for them. So officially on the 17, Jansen, who's been pretty good in this first half, has poke behind him. Play action, Jansen rolling out, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, has his receiver caught, takes a hit, but not after he doesn't get a first down on the in route, make it a gain of about 17 yards, right up to the 34-yard line. One-on-one -on, -one on the outside battle, little play action, and we see him step up, deliver a strike. Yeah, it looked like a do before. It was just a little passive on that play. Like, if he was in man, he was a little far off and unaggressive. And if he was in zone, you know, he's got to take a jump on that. And uh, that one was a little bit too easy for the Ottawa receiver. So, four receivers to the right. Jansen, that's his big field. Isolation to the left. Receivers go in motion. Play action. Doing a quick screen to the outside receiver. Decent coverage by the Mustangs. But good job by the Ottawa receiver. That's Robin Cooliode again, five yards on the play. First year receiver, good presence out yeah. there so far. And, sm and smart play, they're running a four by package, meaning they have four receivers to one side and they got a tight end on the back side. That really sort of pulls guys out of the box for Ottawa and takes a little bit of the uh, pressure that Western defense can apply in a pass rush off of them and doing the good job of protecting like the offensive line is doing, that gives uh, Jansen a lot of time to throw and he's finding his targets in the zone. So second and five, Polk, who had that great first drive run, hasn't done much since, is in the backfield. Jansen looking back to pass. Drops it off to the, and it's dropped. Looking to run before he could. Jordan Murphy made his presence felt, and Quiode couldn't bring it down. Was very close to the first down marker, too. Yeah, like, I think he felt like he had so much time there that that ball was cut, hanging in the air. He was going to catch and run, but it looks like he was starting to run before he caught it, and... Uh, just falls out of his hands. So Masseri back with Savon Magne Jones. Campbell Fair looking to punt. Fair is taking care of both the punting and spot kicking duties. It is kickoffs that we're seeing Zach Copeland. Fair with time. Masseri down at his 32. Has a little crease. Masseri on the return. Good return like Masseri's north-south attitude, Todd. And the Mustangs will have it on the 47-yard line. 4.02 to play in this first half. Western leads Ottawa 14-10. And you're watching Mustangs Football on OUA TV. Where exceptional student athletes are born. Where records are broken. Where great plays are made. Where school colors ignite passion. Where champions prevail. Where tradition is celebrated. Ontario University Athletics. where exceptional student athletes are born, where records are broken, where great plays are made, where school colors ignite passion, where champions prevail, where tradition is celebrated, Ontario University Athletics.
Western leads Ottawa 14-10. Great first quarter by the GGs as they put up 10 points on the board. Western defense has settled down a bit. Got the go-ahead touchdown on the last drive when second string quarterback Jerome Rancourt on a third and short took it around the end from 22 yards out. Mustangs with the ball back, good field position, 46 yard line. Hillock play action. Hillock has time, steps up. Hillock looking to get around the end. Now running for his life, Evan Hillock to the sideline, slides. Taken out after a gain of five. Close, if not a season long for Evan Hillock. Yeah, that was a long, long. He got five yards, but he ran 20 to get it. And it's nice that Washington was able to start this series at the, uh, the, the, the 45 yard line. Good field position to start. They're starting to win that battle of field position. Picking up five there is a nice play on first down. So let's see if they can convert on second on this play. So second down, let's make it a long five. Edwards in the backfield, play action. Hillock quickly out to Savon Magne Jones. Oh, and he's met immediately. Good play by one of the Cumberbatch brothers. That was number 23, Eric Cumberbatch. So it's going to be third down and short, and the Mustangs are not going to go for it. Oh, yes, they are. Saw A.J. Williamson trot out on the field. Well, I think they're three for three in uh, short yardage uh, opportunities today, so they, they think, why not? Good field position. Even if Savon was able to get that in full flight, it was good coverage by Cumberbatch. Oh, he was on him fast, yeah, and that's, that's a hard route to cover. So Hillick. Gamble by the Mustangs as we approach three minutes. High snap, play action. Oh, there he goes. And then high stepping it for a first down. Good work by Keon Edwards to step over the pile of bodies. And the Mustangs are able to get the chain gang down the field. Yeah, if you watch this, uh, Edwards just sort of hurdles the uh, defensive lineman that was in his way on his way to the first down. Nice athletic play by the big man. So under three minutes in this first half, Western leads 14-10. Yazbek is the, oh, and trying to get it out to Masseri, and it's knocked down by the first year player, Louis Prince. That was a big play by, by Prince, number nine for Ottawa on the, on the defense. Masseri just nicely leaked out there. Oh, and if he caught that ball, he was gone for a lot of yards because that whole field side was open and he had daylight. But he just gets his hand in there enough to knock that ball down. If he didn't do that, that was going to be a big gain by Western. Second and ten. Ottawa not bringing pressure, just rushing four. Hillock steps up, drops it over. And then Savon Magne Jones is going to be a little short. So he's got it at the 45 yard line, three yards short. It's going to be third down and three. Well, I think we know what Weston's going to do here. They've been uh, making a steady diet of doing this all game. They're going to go for it. Do it until you can't. So Hillock spreads out Magne Jones. Seth Robertson inside there as well. Keanu Yazbek, the lone back. Timeout. Yep. Called by the Mustangs. Good decision. Looks like Craig Coleman may have they were a little disagreement with Hillock on what side to line up. Well, they were a little uncertain of who should be standing on the line, the left or the right side tight end. So uh, they kept sort of flip-flopping back and forth. And I think, you know, just to make sure they get it right and not take a flag and put them back and have to punt, let's take a timeout, get this right and get this first down and keep the momentum going. So Ottawa scored on their first possession. It was a 58-yard run by Amakar Polk, and it was 7-0 on their second possession. The Mustangs equaled them. Seven yards to from Hillock to Sylvain Magne Jones. That's the third reception, or pardon me, fourth touchdown for Sylvain Magne Jones. Ottawa then kicked a field goal, making it 10-7, and on a short yardage play on the previous possession, Western's backup quarterback, Jerome Rancourt, kept it himself, went around end, and high-stepped it into the end zone. And that's 14-10, Western over Ottawa. 2.27 to play. They're going to need three yards. Need and a, to get down to the 42-yard line, it looks like. Three yards and a cloud Keanu of dust Yesbeck would work now. Is going to be the deep back. Coleman, besides Hillock. Hillick quickly to the outside. Oh, and Moss and Jamal went down, and the pass was missed. A lot of room out there. He wants that one back, let me tell you. That, that 
pass was open. He was going to catch that. He wasn't getting any yards after the catch, but he didn't need it. He would have had the first down. And he would make that catch nine times out of ten any day. And he'll think about this one tonight in bed. I think as well, Hillick would want that pole back. A little mm. low. Yeah, a little low, a little to the inside. But you know what? Not, you, you should catch that. You touch it, you catch it. Yeah. yeah. Not a perfect pass by Hillick. But a pretty good pass by him. I got to think that the sun might have been a factor as well because it's coming from the south end of the stands. But no excuses for him. He'll get the next one. So turnover by Downs. First turnover over the game. Ottawa takes over on their 45-yard line. Polk with the handoff. Looking for room. Trying to bounce it outside. Good work by the Ottawa, by the Ottawa second level. No one was there from the Western Secondary to support the run. No. No, it looks like they pushed off the receivers and they were able, the offensive tackle was able to turn the defensive end. It looks like there was a bit of a hold there and I got to be honest with you, I might have expected the flag. Was able to get the defensive end and get outside the edge on him and get that first down. Linebackers on that time, Todd, really got caught up inside. Yeah, yeah. No pressure from the edge. Four receivers to the right for Josh Jansen. That's the big field. Polk standing offset to the right. Jansen back quickly over the middle. Reception, oh, a nice run after catch. It's gonna be close to a first down. That was Noah Avery, the second year receiver, his first catch of the game. And yeah, and a little bit of an unchar uncharacteristic miss by Bowers Kane on the tackle there, just sort of had him wrapped and uh, 25 was able to slip off of him and uh, pick up a few extra yards. So second and short, Jansen quickly up under center. Gonna do the little quarterback sneak and he's easily got a first down probably has it by the length of the football nice job feeling his way there I mean he was stuffed at first and sort of rolled backwards and was able to sort of feel the pile moving and slip a little bit to the outside enough for the first down but Western actually made the stop at first and he was able to just get those extra six inches or foot for that first so if I'm Ottawa I'm taking my time here it's a minute 40 time will not be a factor for you but even if this drive is unsuccessful and they have to punt, take as much time mm -hmm. as you can off the clock. Yeah, yeah. don't give Mustangs. Western any time to make a play at the end of as the uh, first half. As we saw last week, it took him 30 seconds to score the winning touchdown. Four to the right for Jansen. Play action, roll it out, dumps it off. There's Jandra with the catch again. Mustangs, not some fundamental tackling here, Todd. A lot of, a lot of drive buys. Yeah, and I mean, they're giving them some space. They have that four receiver set again to that side and uh, you know the, the zone that they're running. It just gives the receivers enough time to catch the ball, and it gives them room to make moves on and the tackle. And Ottawa, well, we'll get to this after this second down. Jansen up under center again, looking for room. Flag on the play, probably offside for the Mustangs. May have infringed on the neutral zone. By putting, by putting all the receivers on one side, or flooding the zone, almost making it easier for Jansen, you're cutting the field in half for him. Mm -hmm. Then it's a matter of him picking out where he thinks best matchup is on man right. or simple zone you should know you know where the defenders are going to be in a zone and again the offensive line for Ottawa is doing a good enough job to give him time to find those receivers so to your point adding to that yes half the field half the options and time to throw and sometimes you know when you're running against a zone defense it takes time to to set that up and to get into those gaps and he has it it seems so it's first and 10. Clock is not going to start until the snap of the ball following the penalty. Three receivers to the left. Double tight end formation. Polk on the handoff. Has room up the middle. Bounces off one. Bounces off two. Drag down to the 25. Tough run for four yards. And it's going to be second down and six. So they went with a double tight, double tight end formation there on the offensive line. Three receivers off to the uh, field side and uh, just enough to sort of create some lanes for the running back to get through on that inside zone. Once again, we see Ottawa slow walking the clock. Gonna take as much time as possible. Down to a minute left. Western leads 14-10 in this first half. Josh Jansen has been good in his first start here in the OUA. Empty backfield, Western bringing pressure off the back end. Jansen lobbing it to the end, intercepted. Beautiful interception. To the 30, 32 yard line, Chris Cameron Kogler, the third year transfer. There's a flag on the play. However, big, big defensive play by the Mustangs. And it was the backside defense a halfback who saw the isolation taught and rolled over in coverage. Great play by CCK as they call them. 
Yeah, they had uh, they had a matchup there where it looked like the halfback sort of let his guy go and the receiver got behind him, but the safety came over to make that play, playing the deep middle, was able to cut it off. The ball was a little bit underthrown. There's a flag on the play, but it happened after the interception, so that'll be tacked on to the... Uh... Looks like it's the center, Sam St. Jean. Sam St. Jean took the hit. Luckily for Ottawa, he's able to get the... So unnecessary roughness is the call on the Mustangs. 41 seconds left. St. John will have the benefit of halftime to recover from that hit. Looks like he just maybe got his bell rung, but in today's game, right, with concussion protocol, there'll have to be a number of steps he goes through. Yeah, he'll do concussion protocol. Safety is the first priority, and uh, just, you know, make sure. And, in fact, sometimes these days you just shut him down until you get a chance to assess him properly in clinic. Uh, tonight or uh, on Monday. So 41 seconds left, ball on the 15 for Western. They got out of that one before the end of the half. So Ottawa's first turnover takes them out of good scoring opportunity as we wind down this half. 42 seconds left. Hillock, play action, looking for time, gets out of the pocket, push pass, Keon Edwards. Is able to get the reception. So keep it'll keep the clock going. Hillock got away with one right there. They were looking for Savon Magne Jones, I think, on the wheel route down the sidelines, unable to get there. And good heads up play by Hillock. They get uh, big number 95, the defensive tackle on him, and he just gets rid of it. He knows he can't throw it away, so very smart to shovel it forward just to get the ball out. They only gained five yards, but at least they don't take the sack for a loss. So it's going to be second down. Six to go. Ottawa's call the timeout. So let's take a look at this replay. Looking for Savon down. Oh, it was had him, but just under pressure. If he's able to step up, right? Savon had a lot of room down that sideline, running the wheel and then breaking it off towards the sideline. Just couldn't connect. Yeah, and you don't need the big play here. You just need the safe play. Just can continue to move the ball down the field. Try and work the clock and get out of this half. You know, you've saved seven points with uh, Ottawa's uh, progress and momentum and by turning the ball over. So let's just keep possession and get well, out of this half First down here, we'll get the Mustangs safely out of the half, you would think. Anything short of a first down, we'll see an Ottawa timeout. Play action. Hillock rolling out. Has time. To the sidelines. Nice catch, Seth Robertson. Steps out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Clock will stop, however. Ottawa only has one timeout, and there'll be two breaks here between plays, so. Nice footwork by Hillock as he got outside. Good delivery. So play action. Hillock looking to take a shot. Just out of the reach of Seth Robertson. And because Ottawa only has one timeout, you can get away with that on a first down play. Yeah, that was a long ball. He, they were going for it on that one. I said you just want to get the ball down the field without taking a shot, and they looked like they wanted to take a shot. I don't think Western's happy being up by only four points right now. So, you know, a little sl little sleeper play with a, uh, with a big hit downfield would have been a nice... Uh, Momentum kill or momentum killer for Ottawa for sure, but going to half with a few extra points. Second down, 18 seconds left. Ottawa with one timeout, bringing pressure. Hillock back to pass to the sidelines. Oh, there's Moss and Jamal makes the catch, knocked out of bounds just in front of the defender. That's Patrick Cumberbatch, second year defensive back. And so there's 12 seconds left. Western has a chance for two more plays here. Boy. I think, I think Western was a little tight on that one. I mean, that was a possibility for a pick six the other way when you're throwing it out there and having the halfback come across and, you know, having a chance at it. That was a, that was a close call. So need to get to about the 45. That's the outside range for Garrity. Play action. Hillock back to pass. Has time. Now it's going to almost run out the half. There's a flag on the play. Four seconds left. And Hillock, is, they're going to have a holding penalty on the play because you can't put time back on the clock. Ottawa will push them back, make first down and 20. Yeah. And I'm thinking now, 
we've seen go back many years. I think Will Finch was first year quarterback. Western tried some shenanigans at the end of the first half against Guelph and it ended up Guelph picking it up and scoring on a fumble return when really there was little chance of scoring on the play. Right, just right. I know there's one thing, always press the advantage, always try to get, but there's a point where you just have to. It's high risk, high reward. Yeah. And the risk sh should outweigh the reward in these situations. So four seconds left. Clock will start on the snap of the football. Keanu Yezbeck is the deep back for the Mustangs. Just taking the handoff, looking for room. Dances in the crease. Yazbek gets to the outside. And then Yazbek stretches it out and forced out of bounds. Keanu Yazbek will end this first half. And so the Mustangs with a four-point lead. Ottawa scored all 10 in their first quarter. Western had a touchdown in the first 15 minutes from Savon Magne Jones and then had a nice run by Jerome Rancourt in the second 15 minutes and take a four-point lead into the dressing room. Todd, before we uh, take a quick break, outstanding moment or moments for you? Ooh. Well, I think he and Edwards having that one big breaking run is a, uh, is a big moment. I think they were uh, not doing that a lot so far, so for him to have one big breaker was good. Um, and that interception to sort of change the momentum at the end of the first half by the safety, Western safety, and, uh, you know, take the ball over and run the uh, – the half out, I think that was probably the biggest play of the half, in my opinion, especially as a defensive guy. Yeah, certainly. Chris Cameron Kogler with that drive-snuffing interception to end the half was probably best play defensively for the Mustangs. Halftime right now as Western leads Ottawa 14-10, and you're watching Mustangs football on OUA TV. Welcome to the inaugural and the first of many diversity in sports botron. Congratulations to everybody for making this all become a reality. I would highly recommend that people within the sport landscape in Canada definitely come out to this conference next year. There's so much good information that can be absorbed from here. And I think we can all be part of the change within Canada if we all actively engage in conversations like this. Coming to the Diversity and Sports Conference was one of the best experiences I ever had after coming to Canada. The people I was able to meet, the people I was able to network with, the friends I made, and the learnings I gained were tremendous. Sign up right now. Follow them on whatever pla social media platform they are. Uh, email the OUA, contact them, contact whoever you need to contact, find out when they're getting ticket sales again, and get here, get here. This is a must do every single year. Everyone needs to be here. We need to pack this place and get at it again in 2024. We don't have to work alone. We can do this together. And it shows by the numbers that are here that we want to improve and we want to make a better future for all Canadians. Doesn't matter where they're from, but that's the goal that we have. So thank you so much for coming to the inaugural conference and dare I say, see you next year. where exceptional student athletes are born, where records are broken, 
where great plays are made. Where school colors ignite passion, where champions prevail. Where tradition is celebrated, Ontario University Athletics. Halftime between Western and Ottawa. It's homecoming here at Western University, and the Mustangs are leading the GGs 14 to 10, Todd. We saw three touchdowns in that first half. It was Amlicar Polk who had the first touchdown for the GGs. 58 yards in total as he takes it off tackle left, and then away to the races. Here's Evan Hillick to Savon Magne Jones from seven yards out. Savon Magne Jones, fourth touchdown of the season for the All Canadian. And then here's Jerome Rancourt, the big quarterback, going around and, and rambling. And the point! The even. cheeky point, the, the cheeky point. Rancourt from 22 yards. And that's a recap of the majors for the first half. Ottawa had a field goal as well. And it is 14 to 10. So, stand out in that, really liked Ottawa's offensive effort in that first quarter. Had a drive of 86 yards, had a drive of 52 yards. Had a nice drive going at the end of this first half, Todd, but really, you know, forced the turnover and it was the end of it. From the Mustangs offensively, what have you seen? What have you liked? Well, I mean, they're certainly coming out with a balanced attack, which, I mean, unlike a lot of teams in the OEA this year, it seems, you know, Windsor's a run-heavy team and then Laurier's a pass-heavy team, you know. Uh, Mac is a pass heavy team. It's good to see them successfully run in a balanced attack, which I think you really have to do in this league in order to be successful at the end of the season. If you're a run heavy or a pass heavy team, you know, the defenses have a bit of an easier job planning around what to do to you. But with Western, getting the ball running, getting the ball rolling, uh, and, and allowing Hillock still some time to make some the passes he likes to make, I think that is really effective in investing in the later games for the season. One of the things uh, I think we are starting to see a little bit from Western is not using the run to set up the pass, using the pass to set up the run. Mm -hmm. Taking short first down passing opportunities, using your possession receivers, getting that five and six yards, and then it's an easier, you know, easier for uh, uh, Gaetan Richard, the offensive coordinator, to make calls using the whole playbook on that second down. Right, like look at traditionally, you know Western is a run heavy team and ha are very successful at running the ball. But from the very first game this season when they came out and started throwing the ball in that first game and only ran less than 100 yards, you know, you're sort of forcing, you're expecting the defense to do one thing to take away, you know, your run heavy game. And now that leaves opportunities open downfield for you to throw against. And, uh, you know, to your point, you know, you can set up that run game when teams have to start covering Hillock and the receivers downfield. It opens up the box for you to run against. We're starting to see, or we saw on a couple of those drives, Ottawa really starting to play down in distance. First and 10, bringing in, you know, extra defenders mm. in the box, doing a bit of a run blitz, which means it's going to be one on co one coverage behind. Have to give a lot of speed for the Mustangs receivers, so a lot of respect is being given, lots of room out there. There's a chance for Hillock just to do some quick hitters and get those five yards. And I don't think uh, Coach Gleason was expecting to have such a pass heavy and pass successful team uh, in Ottawa with the second or third string quarterback, Jansen, that's in there. And I think that's surprised everybody watching the game today and certainly surprised Gleason as the defensive coordinator. They weren't expecting this. They probably were going to be expecting a run heavy game and they're throwing the ball all over the field. Last week in the OUA, a bit of a London connection for the players of the week. Laurier quarterback Taylor Elgersma, an Oak Ridge Oak graduate, was firing on all cylinders, and he led the Golden Hawks to their fourth straight victory in the Crosstown rivalry against Waterloo. Threw for 318 yards on the day. He was 20 of 27, 74% completion rate. Two weeks ago, he had six touchdowns through the air. Last week, he had five, and the first was a 62-yarder with Jake Atkinson. Elgersman now leads the OUA in passing yards with 313 a game and completion percentage, 77%, ranked second in touchdown with 11. 
On the other side of the football, it was Western's Jackson Finley. It was a rematch against Queens, and in the third quarter, Finley was able to get an Alex Vreken pass in the Western red zone and take it back. 95 yards for the momentum swinging pick six. That was the highlight of his performance. He also collected four solo tackles, two assists, including a big stop at the goal line late in the game. Jackson Finley from North Vancouver is the defensive football player of the week. And from Carlton, it is Othman Braun, the Ravens' return man, had a great game last week, had uh, five returns for a total of 165 yards, had an 80-yard touchdown return in one, had a 66-yard return for another. He is the leading punt returner now in the OUA, almost 25 yards an attempt. Othman Braun is your special teams player of the week. Second half, kickoff, coming up in about eight minutes. You're watching Mustangs football on OUA TV. Listen, you're more than your successes. You're more than your failures. Everything you got. You're the work. It's dirty work. It's work that hurts. It's work that defines you. Good, bro. It's that fire that burns inside you. One more. Be you. It's always been you. You're the work. That smoke. Give him that bite. where exceptional student athletes are born, where records are broken, where great plays are made, where school colors ignite passion, where champions prevail, where tradition is celebrated, Ontario University Athletics.
Welcome to the inaugural and the first of many diversity in sports podcast. Congratulations to everybody for making this all become a reality. I would highly recommend that people within the sport landscape in Canada definitely come out to this conference next year. There's so much good information that can be absorbed from here, and I think we can all be part of the change within Canada if we all actively engage in conversations like this. Coming to the Diversity in Sports Conference was one of the best experiences I ever had after coming to Canada. The people I was able to meet, the people I was able to network with, the friends I made, and the learnings I gained were tremendous. Sign up right now. Follow them on whatever plat social media platform they are. Uh, email the OU way, contact them, contact whoever you need to contact, find out when they're getting ticket sales again, and get here, get here. This is a must do every single year. Everyone needs to be here. We need to pack this place and get at it again in 2024. We don't have to work alone. We can do this together. And it shows by the numbers that are here that we want to improve and we want to make a better future for all Canadians, doesn't matter where they're from, but that's the goal that we have. So thank you so much for coming to the inaugural conference and dare I say, see you next year. Welcome back to the second half. Kickoff coming up in just moments. Western leads Ottawa 14-10. And if you're just joining us, it was the GGs on the board first. Amilcar Polk with a 59-yard run just two minutes into this football game. And it was 7-0 GGs. Savon Magne jones a seven-yard reception from Evan Hillick. 4.30 into the game, and it was tied at 7. Campbell Fair added a 41-yard field goal on the final play of the first quarter, 10-7 Ottawa, and then Jerome Rancourt, the second-string quarterback on a short yardage play, kept the ball, went around the left end, and rambled in from 22 yards. That made it 14-10. Ottawa had a bit of a drive going to end the first half. However, it was an interception down near the goal line by Chris Cameron Cogler, the Western defensive back, snuffed out any hopes for points. And Western goes into the halftime with a four-point lead. Ottawa will kick off. Zach Copeland has the ball teed up at the 45-yard line. And it is Edwards and Yazbek, the one-two punch as running backs, are split as the kick returners. Yazbek. Moves up to the seven, off his hands, gets it cleanly to the 10, makes one cut, Yazbek cuts back, nice run. Keanu Yazbek, and he drives down to the, about the 36, 37 yard line. So the initial miscatch by Yazbek doesn't come back to hurt them, and he gets a good return Todd, out to the 37 yard line. Yeah, maybe he wants to bobble that ball every time he returns it, because uh, once he got it, he was gone and off to the races, and he was able to split a number of uh, cover unit guys. Um, I think the sun got in his eyes there and he was just sort of came up short with the hand. So lucky to get that off and get such a good return. So Evan Hillock was 13 of 17 in that first half. Very efficient, 139 yards. His longest, just 22 yards. And he had the one touchdown to Savon Magne Jones. Keon Edwards offset to the right. Receivers go in motion. Hillock quickly to the outside. Magne Jones avoids one on the tackle, steps out of bounds. Gain of about 11 on the play, and it's going to be a first down Mustangs on the first play of the second half. El Osri, uh, number six El Osri on the uh, defensive back, uh, missed that tackle. Um, you know, he's coming in to sort of cut uh, down that ball carrier at the legs, but comes up a little bit short, and he's able to get rumble Magnet Jones for a few more yards. First and 10, Edwards the deep back. Play action. Hillock back to pass. Leaking out in the backfield, there's Seth Robertson. 
He has about seven on the reception as they get right to the midfield stripe. They'll need three yards for the first down. Well, we wondered at halftime what they would do when they came out into the second half, how they would start. You know, they, we talked about them setting up the uh, run with the pass, so maybe that's what they're doing here. They're certainly sort of beating uh, Ottawa at their own game right now, just sort of getting these little passes leaking out of the backfield and uh, into the soft zone here underneath coverage. So let's see if they continue that uh, in the series. Second, three. Edwards taking the handoff, looking for room up the middle, and Keon Edwards is through to the 40, 35, one man to beat, 30, 25, 20, pushed out. He'll make, get out that 16-yard line, make it the 17 officially. Keon Edwards, once he was through that first level, no support from the defensive backfield. Yeah, and here you go. You just have this... Uh, this hack play inside zone where they bring the uh, the H across to block the backside end. And again, you just do this like time after time to try and find that crease, and there it is. Big game. Edwards over 80 yards now in the game on carries. Yazbek, play action. Hillick has time over the middle. He's got Mosin Jamal. Touchdown as he steps over the defender, Mosin Jamal. With the touchdown. And the Mustangs strike quickly in the second half. Just a couple of plays. And we're 85 seconds in, and their lead is 20 to 10. What a, what a great explosive series this was to start the second half. You know, a number of nice little sort of like easy gainers with the pass and a nice hit from Keon Edwards with a big gain, and then, and then here we go. Nice catch over the middle for a touchdown. So here's Garrity. Easy swing, puts the point after touchdown good, and just beyond the portable toilets. All right, now full Ottawa. House, full house here for homecoming. And unlike perhaps the first week of the season where predominantly the far side is freshmen, homecoming, they stick around for the second half. Yeah. Well, a good game also helps. And hey, Western's putting a lot on here in this show. They've got food trucks on the far side. They got a giant screen TV down on the back side as well. So they must have something going on in the field. You know, we had, we had students c continuing to come in just before half, so this is a full house with lots going on, lots of fun today for homecoming. 73 yards on that drive for the Mustangs, their second best of the game, and now have a 21-10 lead. So, Ottawa had a great first quarter, just couldn't get on track in the second quarter. You're now down 11 to the Mustangs. I'm sure Coach Marcel Belfay uh, looking for, you know, for the... Uh, Ottawa needs to have a positive series of downs here. So here's Garrity, high into the corner. Up to the nine, to the 20, bounces off one, tries to get outside, taken back down. Let's see where they mark forward progress. It looks like it's the 19 yard line. That was Kamara, again, first year running back on the return, Suleiman Kamara. And the GGs with Josh Jansen with his first start. Coming up for their first possession in the second half. Jansen was 11 of 14, just that one interception now the end of the first half. Snuffed out their chances for any points there. Western's kickoff cover team has done a great job today getting downfield and taking on and stacking the, uh, the return blocks and able to get uh, tackles deep in the Ottawa zone. So Polk is the lone back. Taking the handoff, looking for room up the middle, can't find, bounces off the edge. Nice second effort by Polk as he's able to get three yards out of almost nothing there, Todd. Yeah, he, uh, he got swallowed up in a hurry. Did a little spin off and was able to get to the edge for a few, uh, few yards gain. There it is, boom, defensive lineman stuffs him up and then rolls off for those extra couple of yards before he's taken down by the Western linebacker. You know, I think Ottawa was pretty happy going to half with the uh, only being down four points, so I think they would really like to keep momentum going here. But Western's defense so far doing a good job to start the series. Three receivers to the right. One isolated to the left. The do before on that matchup. Western bringing pressure. One-on-one -on -one and a do before. Just gave the receiver a little bit of room out there, and it's going to be a first down. Gain of six 
on the play. That was Malenfant, I think, with his second or third catch of the game. Yeah. So Maxime Malenfant, fourth-year receiver, gets the first down. Yeah, I do before again, just a little bit soft on that boundary side. I mean, that's a shorter field, and usually you're able to tighten lock up a little bit more on that receiver. But a do before, much like in the first half, just a little bit loose on that coverage. That's not like him, and he's not too worried about it, I don't think, because they're not going to get downfield on him. But I think he'd like to tighten that up. Good work by the Ottawa offensive line that time, picking up the pressure. So four receivers to the right, isolation to the left. Poke the lone back, taking the handoff, looking for room outside. Brought down after a gain of two or three. Was that Riley McLeod stepping up to fill the hole there? Good work by the middle linebacker, Riley McLeod. You know, it's talking about setting up the run. I mean, Ottawa's been doing a decent job of that today, too, where they stretch this, uh, this defensive backfield out with four receivers to the field side. I mean, pulling guys out of the box, and that's where they've sort of been more successful today, running that ball up inside. So it's Nixon, McLeod, and Lawrence Bowers Canes, the linebackers, watching for crossing routes on this play. Jansen back to pass, has time, swings it out of the backfield. Oh, just out of the arms of Polk. Boy, that's a tough catch. Polk is running. He's fully exposed that time. Uh, Jansen, they're just a little bit of inexperience. Threw it ahead of him. Yeah, just a little too far out of his reach. I mean, that, that ball was a little bit aggressive. He was wide open. That's the check down uh, passing option. And, and he actually had room to run had he caught that. But like you said, Jansen just threw it in a little bit too hard, just out of the reach of the running back, and he wasn't able to get it to get upfield. So hold on the Mustangs. Deep call oh. from the back judge. And it's going to be 10 yards, and it's going to be a first down for Ottawa. Mm, that's too bad because Western had, you know, a nice little series there, and they were going to be ready to punt it away. But now they give him a first down, more life. So first down, GG's. Western with a four-man front. Poke offset to the right. Back to pass is Jansen. Looking to go down the seam. Oh, and connects a nice connection just out of the reach. It was Jordan Murphy who thought he could step in there. But a good reception. Nice strike by Jansen with the fastball down the seam. That was Kerwin Kerwin Guist Geist. with his second catch of the game. And, I mean, he caught that with one hand, threaded the defensive backs, was able to keep uh, his attention on the ball, his eye on the ball, and get that with one hand. That was a great catch down the seam. Taking advantage of the Mustang hold on the previous play, Ottawa has kept this drive alive, and then, with a nice long strike, are in Mustang territory. First down on the 36, right hash, four receivers to the left. Jansen looks there right away. Then, a little screen pass back to Polk on the right side. Good coverage, gain of five on the play. But good work downfield by the Mustangs. They let Polk catch it, then swarmed him. I mean, Ottawa will also be, well, that's all right. We got first five yards on the first down. We'll take it. That's more of the pace that uh, he wanted to throw the ball on that outlet pass uh, two plays ago. You know, this was a little screen play. You're used to that dump off. You know, he probably should have treated that, uh, that other throw to the running back the same way. But, you know, five yards, good pickup. All right, big play for the GGs. Not wanting to settle for a field goal and a longer one at that. Polk, offset to the left, four receivers in motion. Jansen back to pass, quick set, down the seam. Has his receiver, but he's going to be short. Looks like he's going to be maybe a yard short. Needed to get to the 26. Referee is marking it at the 27. And so it's going to be third down and short. Uh, nice job. Ottawa by is bringing in their big package. That was a nice job by Jackson Finley to secure that tackle because had he caught that and slipped off, he was going to be gone for some. So he was able to keep him just short of the first down. But, yeah, this is a good smart, smart play Mahler. by Ottawa. Yeah, Matt Mahler, the backup quarterback, fourth-year player, playing the Jerome Rancourt role for Ottawa. Full house backfield. Mahler up under center. Everyone in motion. Mahler on his own. I don't think he got there. Mahler, I think, did he go off script on that? I think Western has it. And it looks like Mahler did not even come close. Oh. Let's see the replay here. Nothing. No oh. pet. There was no surge downfield at all. Yeah, he just tried to slip it outside line. towards the tackle and not able to get any yards on that before the defensive uh, unit swarmed him and pulled him back short I of the first down. 
if we look at the replay again, did it not look like, so they have a full house backfield, two lead backs, got there either too early, like the timing just wasn't right. He didn't hit it with the surge. No, you got to have that surge, right? You yeah. just need to push over a, a foot, you know, a, a yard at most, and, and, you know, you can almost fall forward that much. But, you know, in credit to Western's defense, they did a good job getting being a low man, creating a pile, and he must have thought that he could have slipped it around the outside a little bit and got that, uh, you know, got those extra yards behind their guard tackle. But, uh, you know, there was a hole there. The defenders were able to get in it and shut him down. Sam St. Jean, the center. Second time he's needed to be attended to on the field. He would be a big loss for the GGs if he's unable to return. So turnover on downs for the GGs. The Mustangs will take over on their 28 yard line. So good drive for the GGs, but they came away without points to start the second half. The Mustangs already have a touchdown in the second half from Moss and Jamal. So Evan Hillick with receivers in motion, play action. He's looking to go deep, he's got Jamal. Jamal with the catch over the shoulder and taken down at the 30 yard line. Beautiful play from Mawson Jamal. 52 yards on the reception. Caught it on his shoulder. Great run downfield to get open and beat his man, his defender. He was just a straight up streak, he was going that, he was going straight down the field the whole time, trying to outrace his two back and the ball was just thrown short right on top of his shoulder. So great job by Jamal to secure that for the catch and the uh, first down. The Mustangs are exploding here in the second quarter. Second half, pardon me. Hillick back to pass. Seth Robertson, touchdown. Robertson from 31 yards. And the Mustangs with big chunk plays have scored again and this crowd has come to life. Yeah, two big explosive plays here, back to back, and one the last one for the touchdown. I mean, both incidences, the receiver was able to beat their man in man coverage. You know, the first one with the streak to Jamal, the second one with the post over the middle, you know, and it was able to take advantage of the corner, probably one of the younger corners uh, out on the edge there, and great touchdown. So let's see if Robertson can catch his breath. He's also the holder on extra points. <laughs> he seems to be okay. And Brian Garrity kicks it through right off the roof of the porta potties. So right. Western with their second touchdown now extend the lead 28 to 10, 754 to play in this second half. So looking at the replay again, Todd, there with time was Evan Hillick and well beyond the defender had to slow down a bit with Seth Robertson. Yeah. His seventh touchdown of the season. Number six, El Asri, the defensive back, second year out of uh, France, one of our fr the French players, but just could not maintain man coverage. And running the, covering that post when you have an outside shade at the cornerback position, it's a tough route to cover. And, you know, when you're going against a receiver like he was going against, that's really difficult to, to cover. And so his third touchdown pass for Evan Hillick, each of the big three as we could now – Say, Moss and Jamal with one earlier this half. Seth Robertson from 31 yards. And it was Savon Magne Jones from seven yards. The fourth touchdown, Jerome Rancourt on the quarterback keeper from 22. So Brian Garrity, deep into the corner. Oh, cut down nicely on the return. Oh, great tackle. That was great, great tackle. tackle. Just trying to think, was that 16 Ryan Bartleton? I think it was. The fourth year defensive back. Primarily you see him on special teams, but nice tackle right through, right? And Lower made, center mass. I made the comment earlier, Western's getting downfield and coverage very quickly. They're taking on the blocks while maintaining their lanes, and a number of them are getting shots at the ball carrier. And when you're a backup, and you have opportunities on special teams, you want to take advantage of them, and that's exactly what he was doing, number 16 for Western, taking advantage of those opportunities. So here's Jansen. Ottawa needs to get something going here in the second half. Jansen back to pass, under pressure, drops it off. Oh, and the blocking back, typically Jonathan Fournier, is unable to come up with it, and it's going to be second down. That's one where Ottawa... It's not, not a huge gainer, but you need those positive plays. A little low, should have caught it. Yeah, so wide open that and have so much time and space 
that again, sometimes those are the hardest passes to catch. You know, you start to think, all right, I'm going to get this and go upfield, but you got to catch it first before you do. So we said third down and short was a big play for the GGs. Second and 10, and you've just given up two touchdowns, looms huge for Ottawa here. Western bringing pressure off the edge. Jansen back to pass, beats it. Oh, good defensive work. Knocks it down. And that was Jackson Finley, the safety, who had good coverage on Noah Avery, and the GGs will have to punt. Well timed by Jackson Finley. Great job stepping up into that, uh, that slant or that post route and cutting it off, getting a hand in there. He was in a great position for the tackle. If he caught it, he was going to make the tackle. But to get a hand in there, knock the ball down, and prevent that gain, big play and by Jackson Finley. And not go through the receiver. Maybe he touched him slightly, but not go through it to bring a flag. No. Well played by Finley. Yeah, perfectly played. So we got Masseri and Savon Magne jones back. Western bringing pressure. Almost get there. Oh, flag in the play. So there's Masseri, but it's going to be roughing. Did not let the kicker land. Oh, I'd love to see the replay on this one because I think Coach Marshall is going to say, hey, you touched our kicker earlier. We barely touched this guy. Now, he did not get a piece of the ball, which obviously, you know, you want to do and you have to be able to do to uh, get away with that, but... That was the wrong replay. So we, maybe we won't get a chance to see that. So a uh, Western flag. penalty again keeps a GG's drive alive. And I know what you're thinking. If you're a coaching staff, big play here turns it around. But wasn't the big play the two and out? In, in this case, Todd, aren't you looking for, let's just force them to kick, play right. it safe. Right. We're going to get the ball in Western right. end. And remember, it's a game of field position. Yeah. I mean, had they punted it away, Western starts to creep up with the uh, the, the gain in, in field position and puts them in another spot to take the ball downfield and continue momentum. So four receivers to the right, poke on the handoff, looking for room up the middle, finds a crease. Amakar poke bounces off the first, the second, and then drives his way for a gain of nine, possibly even ten. Yeah, that was a great push by Ottawa with, with that ball. So Polk just up the middle, looking for room, and then you watch him, that second effort by Polk. Here's a fifth-year player, right? So short yardage. Ottawa looks to get a generous spot from the side judge on the far side of the field, although this guy is saying, nope, they're short. They're going to be short. They're going to be a couple inches short. It's going to be third down again. That's a big stand by Western's defense to give yourself another shot to, uh, to stuff them. So I think it's Craig Trimble, the line judge on our side, said no. He did not get the first down. Half a football short. Here's the big package in for Western. Let's see if Ottawa, they are keeping. Jansen in and not subbing in. Matt Mahler, who was unsuccessful last time. So Jansen, a little bit of a problem, should have a first down. I though. think he got that one. He had enough of a push on the right side to get that ball over. But, you know, keeping him in is not a terrible idea. Sometimes when you bring a quarterback in off the bench, all right, for these short yard situations, you're not in the flow of the game. You haven't been activating your muscles during the game. And sometimes it's hard to get it going. Where you keep your, your starter in, you only need a yard. Sure, do you risk a, a chance of injury in a pile? Maybe. But at least he's got the momentum to get the play done. So you just see the surge off the right side. Didn't get much, but got enough. Taking a look around the OUA, Laurier leading Mack at halftime, 14-9. Boy, that is a game Mack really needs to win in order to get back into the playoffs. Carlton is shutting out U of T, 20-0, and Guelph is dominating York, 59-7. First and 10 here for the GGs, trailing 28-10. Western with two big plays in the second half, and there's a play down the middle. Jean Draw, the receiver, he's got a catch down to about the 38 yard line. Nicholas Jean Draw with another reception, and Ottawa back into Mustang territory. Yeah, that was a nice pass and throw by Ottawa. He just stuck that ball right between the linebacker and the halfback. Oh, he's like the out, the out and post on that route. The halfback really should have carried in a little bit further with him before he got to the linebacker zone, and, and instead he was able to hit it in the seam right in between the two. So Western's exhibited some pretty good bend, but don't break defense throughout the day. 3.40 to play in this third quarter. First down for the GGs. Poke on the carry, looking for a crease up front. Keeps his legs moving, gets over the 35, down to the 34, make it three yards, and seven to go. Malcolm Fraser 
one of the defensive tackles on the stop. Good young player out of British Columbia. Yeah, that was a nice job by Riley McLeod, was able to get off of this block. The guy came out, the lineman came out to the, uh, to the linebacker. He was able to scrape off and get that tackle. Fraser also made a nice play up front as yes. the defensive tackle. Yes, yeah, yeah. off his block. We'll be mentioning that name over the next four years many times, I assume. Four receivers to the right. Backside pressure coming. They're able to get out to Polk. Looking for room in the open field. Polk turns it up. Good speed by the running back, and he's got a first down. Gain of nine on the play. Nice job by Polk. Had he turned that up earlier, he would have had a face full of, face full of Francisi in his face, and he would have got cut down early. But instead, he kept getting to space and was able to pick up the extra yards. Very smart play by Polk. Backside pressure was coming to the Mustangs. They had the right call on because they're going away from the pressure and poke out into the flats. Lawrence Bowers Kane, slow to get up. He's walking under his own power back to the huddle. Doesn't look like he's leaving. Although I think his teammates are, ex are extolling him. If you are hurt, take a knee. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to be a hero there. He, you know, get off the field, get someone else in. I mean, if you're the uh, Ottawa offensive coordinator, you're saying, hey, let's run at this guy. I mean, he's clearly in pain. Meanwhile, a referee needs to be looked at. Oh. One of the referees took a hit on the play, getting checked out on the far side by the Ottawa training staff. So 2.50 to play in this third quarter. Western with two touchdowns to open up the second half. Have extended their lead to 28-10. Ottawa on their one possession in the second half. Went for it on third down, came up short. And so now, putting a drive together, have the ball first and 10, 24-yard line, and probably will not want to settle for three points here. No, we'll take this, it if there's no other options. Yeah. But At this point, you want to put seven points on the board and really try and close this gap up. They were playing so well against them. I mean, you want to just give yourself one little bit of extra lifeline you know, and try and get that momentum back. So double tight end formation. Polk is the lone back, just three receivers looking to go in motion. Polk offset to the right. Back to pass is Jansen. Goes through his reads, can't find one. Looking to go to the outside. Jansen trying to leg it out, and Jansen puts his shoulder down, and he gets up to about the 19-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. Calls of holding from the booth. Not sure if there was one there. Yeah, no, there was a definite hold on uh, on number 55, Max von Muldor. Oh, I'm watching. I was watching Pelesny. Didn't look like there was a hold on him. So, but but again, to Ottawa's credit, they do a great job protecting. And although there was one little hold, that wasn't the only thing that uh, you know allowed the quarterback Jansen to get out. I mean, they are protecting him very well and giving him time to at least look downfield. So three receivers to the right. Polk, the lone back to the left. Need five yards on second down. Jansen, back to pass. Looking for a receiver. Goes through his read. Has his first one. Oh, good shirt tackle. Don't think he's got enough. And it's going to be third down. Late flag comes in. And there's a late flag on the play. Let's see from the replay what it might be. Don't have it on the screen, no. so let's see what the referees say. Face mask. Okay. So Max Nixon on the face mask penalty. So because it's unnecessary roughness, not half the distance, it's fully enforced. It'll go down to the one-yard line. So Ottawa. Way back when, Todd, if you remember, it was a roughing the kicker. That extended this drive. Now a face mask has it down to the one-yard line. And Ottawa, with under two minutes to play in this third quarter, looked to have settled things down. It's Matt Mahler back in, looking to the right. Mahler met face first as he tries to go over the line, and he's not going to get there. And the ball will go back to the one-yard line. Yeah, back to your point about the penalties. Those are the types of things that cause defensive coordinators to go gray. You're doing a great job. You're doing what you need to do defensively to keep the ball at one end of the field or shut down, you know, the uh, the penalty in the uh, Ottawa red zone, you know, which extended the drive to start this was frustrating. But then to make a good aggressive play with a tackle, but you just get those fingertips on the face mask and put them on the one yard line. Like that that's a big swing of field position and potentially points here. So... So Ottawa, time running out on the play clock. Mahler 
Gets up under center. How many times are they going to run Mahler? Play action, under pressure, drops it off, out of the reach. Flag on the play, and it's going to be unnecessary roughness. Is that Max Nixon again, 31? That will be a fresh set of downs anyways. And, yep. and really, these guys are in three-down territory. All right, so let's take a look at the replay. Nixon came through on the play action. Full flow to the right. Mm. Looks like hands to the head. Yeah, he got a contact to the head, so yeah. they're going to call that every time, especially yeah. in 2023. So Second penalty on Nixon on this drive. Yeah, this gives Ottawa three sets of downs to get this touchdown, and you know they're going to take it at this point. I don't think they'll settle for a field goal. So Mahler stuffed on the first play, incomplete but unnecessary roughness on the second. Do you try Mahler again, or do you hand it off to your running back? I think I would hand it off to my money maker. OUA. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what Ottawa does. Single receiver to the right, full house backfield. Mahler up under center to Poke. Weaves his way into the end zone. Amakar Poke, his second touchdown of the game. And Ottawa cuts the lead to 28-16, PAT pending. Yeah, and there it is. They just send two fullbacks out to the edge to try and cut off the, uh, the edge. They push out the defensive end, which probably is the halfback, and just run it in the off tackle, off tight end almost too easily into the end zone. So Ottawa takes advantage of a couple of penalties by the Mustangs. It started out with a roughing the punter when the Mustangs were a little too aggressive, then a face mask deep in territory, and on a second down incompletion, it was hands to the head. So Ottawa able to take advantage, put an extra point on the board, and it's 28-17, 49 seconds to play in this third quarter. And that really gives Ottawa a lot of life. I mean, Western had them in great position. You yeah. don't want to give opponents life. So just taking a look the at the touchdown again. Just a good surge off the right-hand edge. Amakar Polk, the fifth-year running back, just able to pick his way into the end zone. And a good seal block as well. Yeah, yeah, they had... You know, tight end down, tackle down, full back, full back into the uh, gap. And a, like you said, a push out on the, uh, on the edge guy. Created a nice little hole for them. So the Mustangs with an explosive third quarter. Drives of 73 and 82 yards. Looking to snuff out any Ottawa hopes with a third score on this drive. It's going to be Zach Copeland who tees it up on the 45. This time a little different. Copeland tees it up on the left hash. So Yazbek is deep. He's at about the eight-yard line, close to the numbers. Right down the middle of the field is Keon Edwards, OUA MVP last year, the Larry Haler Trophy winner. Just bunts it in there. It drops for Yazbek on the 20, looking for room. Interesting little soft swing kick that was nicely placed. Kind of surprised Craig Coleman wasn't more aggressive and then caught that pa caught that uh, ball in the air. Although the rule is, Todd, if you have to take a step back, don't take a step yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. If it's anywhere above your shoulders, you let it go, let it get to the guy behind you. But like you said, it's just over his head. And so what happens is it hits the turf, it sort of spins, it puts the brakes on the ball, and it kind of buys your, uh, your cover guys a little bit more time to get downfield and close the gap on the returner. And it doesn't give him a clean fielding of the ball to start turning it upfield and running. So. And the risk to the kicking team, if it's a little too high, or if it's not properly placed, it's going to be uh, an easy return. You're going to have a guy with full momentum. However, the Mustangs will also get a hold on this play. So let's back him up to the 15-yard line. All right, Weston's really starting to lose the so game. So the Ottawa field position defense here. looking for a two and out here. Coming off the touchdown, cutting the lead to 11 points, 44 seconds left in this third quarter. And Ottawa hoping to do a quick Force of a punt. Pardon me, starting line of scrimmage, the 10. Oh, the sticks aren't set up, so they blow, blow the play dead before it starts. Chain gang. Feeling the heat maybe a little bit today as well. So Hillock. With Edwards to his right. Quickly to the outside. 
There's, Key, there's Savon Magnet jones makes his first man miss. Gets a couple more. It's going to be a gain of 13 yards on the play. Lots of room out there. Yep. Simple pitch and catch. Savon Magnet jones operating so well in space. Yeah, and on the field side, you usually have your corner backed off a little bit because it's such a long throw. You give that receiver a lot of room. But when it's, a, when it's Evan Hillick and you can sling it out there 100 miles an hour, you know, that room cuts off pretty quick. And uh, now you got a tough tackle for your corner to come up and make. Play action. Looking to go down the – nice catch. Good tackle, though. So there's Moss and Jamal on the crossing pattern. Looks like he's got enough for the first down. Yeah, and he felt that. He felt that when he caught that ball fully exposed. Jerry DeLorme, the, the first-year defensive back, makes a hard tackle. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. 15 minutes left in this homecoming game. Western leads Ottawa 28-17. And you're watching Mustangs Football on OUA-TV. Listen, you're more than your successes. You're more than your failures. Everything you got. You're the work. It's dirty work. It's work that hurts. It's work that defines you. It's that fire that burns inside you. Be you. It's always been you. You're the work. You want that smoke? Give him that bye. Fifteen minutes to play, and the Mustangs are trying to bring it home in this homecoming game. Up 28-17. First and ten. They started this drive on their ten-yard line. Evan Hillick with receivers in motion. Keon Edwards the handoff. Edwards breaks through the line. Edwards keeps his hips going, and Edwards has 13 yards. Edwards now over 100 for the game, making it about 106. Yeah, by the time Edwards gets into the defensive backfield, man, he's got full advantage because those DBs do not want to be taking him on full steam. I mean, that's a good problem to have for Western to get them there, but not good for the DBs. So Western has moved out from the shadow of their goalposts. First down on the 47. There is a problem down on the field. It looks like an equipment issue. 33 for the GGs we has have a, an, an equipment, equipment malfunction. Issue. That's Mark Rondeau, the second year linebacker. He'll have to be replaced. I don't think they can fix it immediately. While we're waiting here, we're just getting the stats from uh, the third quarter. And I mean, just how interesting, like passing yards, 208 for Ottawa, 281 for Western, and, and, and the running yards, 145 for Ottawa, 152 for Western. So a pretty even Steven game right now. Western obviously starting to pull away in the, in the rushing yards. But I think Ottawa, again, will look at these stats and be very happy with how they're playing so far. Looking quickly around the OUA, Loria has extended their lead over Mac 21-9. Carlton still up on Toronto by 20 points, 20 nothing, And Guelph is steamrolling York, 73-7. to First down, Edwards on the handoff. He's got room outside, and he makes a shake and bake, and he's got 10, he's got 15, straight arm. He's angled out of bounds, but it's going to gain almost of 20 yards. Let's make it 18 to be official. Great run. You saw all of Keon Edwards' talents on display there. <laughs> I think I just said that you never want to see Keon Edwards get into the defensive backfield. Well, you definitely don't want to see him getting out towards the corners. Uh, I remember back in the day to trying to take on Tim, uh, Tim Tyndale out at the corner. I'm like, whoa, this is a mismatch I don't like the, uh, the odds of. Well, that's what basically you had there. Keon Edwards out against the corner, and uh, we know who's winning that matchup. Jerry DeLorme, welcome to the OUA. Got shaken bake by Keon Edwards. High snap, quickly to the outside. Magne Jones on the catch. Makes one man miss. Drags the next tackler, thrown down at the 35, but a first down. 
And again, recognition, Todd, it's one-on-one. -on -one. I think I like Savon Magne Jones in every case of that. Yeah, and he was blanketed by two defensive backs there, backs there, one on the outside, one on the inside. And the fact is he was able to, like you said, shake and bake for a few more yards in a first down was impressive. They could have closed on him fast, but he's a shifty, so you got to be careful. you got to break down and make sure you secure that tackle. So, tight end to the left, three receivers to the right, high snap, Yazbek on the handoff, straight arms one, and then keeps his hips driving. He's still going. Still going. And oh, what a great... <laughs> It's like the World Cup has come to World Cup of Rugby's come to Western Alumni Stadium. That mall kept going. Absolutely fabulous. I love the stiff arm to start it, and then the, you know, all of it, all the Ottawa's friends on the defense are coming in to have shots to try and make this tackle. So the and first nobody stiff can arm take him throws down. him to the ground. That is a true Heisman, and then he stiff arms the same guy again. Thirty-five doesn't want any part of this. I love Thirty-five that. is just like yeah. He stiff army twice. That is Western running back football right there at its finest. Braden Cruye will not want to see that on film tomorrow. First down. Edwards in the backfield. Play action. Quickly the outside. Moss and Jamal with the reception. Jamal, quick turn. Oh, he's hauled uh, that'll down. That'll be a horse collar. There's a horse collar tackle. Jamal, the thing I love about him when he catches the ball, he gets in a good, ready run position, and he's got quick feet. Watch him when he catches this pass. And then he squares up and is gone. And then a horse collar at the end. Yeah, and you have to horse. If he doesn't horse collar that tackle, that, that, that's going in for seven points. So right down to the one-yard line. Jamal now over 100 yards on the day. Of course, he had that long 51-yard catch in the third quarter to set up the Seth Robertson touchdown. Uh, such hard for, for Tolu Ahmed there to make that uh, make that play. They're, they're playing that corner off so far. They have hit that throw there all day. So Rancourt gets up by his center. Edwards is the deep back. Backs go in motion. Edwards the handoff. Slices through. He's over the top. But there's a flag. There's a flag on the play. Touchdown is the call. But let's see what the call. The back judge makes the call. Does Ottawa have too many men? That's the only call it really could be. Yeah, if from coming from the backfield, it's not going to be a pass interference. So, too many men. I think That's they'll decline the that. Touchdown, Western, and it's Keon Edwards, his first of the game. Boy, that was everyone making a contribution on that drive. You had great runs by Edward and Yazbek. You had nice catches by Moss and Jamal and Savan Magne Jones. Evan Hillick was spot on. That was a great Mustang drive to open up this fourth quarter and extend the lead. Now back to 18 points. Their third touchdown in the second half as Brian Garrity tags on the extra point. The Western Male Athlete of the Week is Luca Ferreira from Men's Golf. Ferreira finished second in individual scoring at the Western Invitational, which was held at the St. Thomas Golf and Country Club. Luca shot a team best even par 72 to take home a silver medal as part of the Mustangs team. Third place finish at the season launching event. Todd, I also shot a 72 this summer. Then I started the back nine. I was going to say, that would be on a executive nine, I would imagine. Quinn Colwich from Women's Lacrosse is the Western Female Athlete of the Week. She played a big role in both of the Mustangs' women's lacrosse wins this weekend. She scored four goals, added an assist versus McMaster, and then followed up that with a two-goal, four-assist performance in the win over Guelph. Congratulations to Quinn Colwich from Women's Lacrosse and Luca Ferrara from Men's Golf. They're the Western Athletes of the Week. So the Mustangs will take that penalty, 10 yards on the too many men, and tee it up at midfield. So the Mustangs started that drive, Todd, off at their 10-yard line and were able to march 100 yards. They now have touchdown drives in the second half of 73, 82, and 100 yards, over 250 yards of offense through the first approximately 20 minutes. Great Three great touchdown drives in a row yeah, by the Mustangs. At what point are they no longer explosive plays when you have that many explosive plays in a row? Yazbek's being my favorite. That was a great run. So Garrity, seven yards deep into the end zone. As a coach, let me ask you, you have the opportunity, ball's on the 55, right? They drove it deep. They'll get the single point. They'll get it out of the 35. There's a spot where Ottawa's little short kickoff, right? And I, and I don't know how often Western practices it, 
But isn't there a spot where, all right, you're 10 yards short, let's try a shorter, higher kickoff really as a change-up because one point in this field position's everything. Right. One right. If you, if, you can, if you can sort of skyball it down to the five-yard line, and, you know, your, your cover team's been playing great all day and just have them stuffed down there and have them yeah. force them to start on the five-yard line, you buy yourself field position. I, I agree with you. So following the single, Ottawa gets it at the 35-yard line. Jansen has been good in his OUA debut, looking to go to the outside, and it's almost intercepted oh. just through the hands of Matt Williams, the defensive back. He was locked on Jansen that time to his receiver, Hugo Reynard, and the Mustangs did well to defend. Yeah, essentially that time you almost become double covered because you're in coverage on the uh, with the corner, but then your safety has times to come over. You know, I know Evan Hillick makes that throw look so easy. I'm not quite sure Josh Jansen's at that same point yet to get that ball out there that far that fast. Pardon me, Alex Raymond was the rece intended receiver. Second and ten. Jensen back to pass into the flats, looking for his receiver. He's got poke, but oh, well covered. And that was, I think, Richard Adu before the boundary corner who comes up and forces the play. Gain of only five on it. And uh oh, the Mustangs. Malcolm Fraser down Malcolm on the field. Malcolm Fraser, first year defensive tackle who's been impactful so far in this season. Coaching staff, or pardon me, training staff are going to look at his knees right now. Yeah, you kind of hope that when you come out there, it's just going to be a Charlie horse or, or a cramp. But, uh, you know, when they start to hold the knees, you worry a little bit. Speaking of leg injuries, I'm just going to give a shout out to one of my players who had a compound fracture in our game yesterday, Tommy. He just had surgery last night at 12 in the morning. So a, a big shout out to Max Wilson, Banting Bronco, uh, offensive tackle, defensive end. Hoping you recover well and wishing you the best, brother. So unfortunate, game was cut short last night, but so far, uh, how's the season been for the Broncos? Yeah, good start. We uh, got off to a, game, a good game against CCH and then went to York to play at York University against the St. Rock team from Brampton. So uh, lots of fun. And STA yesterday, like you said, we lost by eight, having to cut it short to, to three quarters because of the injury. But obviously, player safety and, uh, and, the, and the, you know, the psychological well-being of your players are more important than finishing the game. So I saw a highlight reel from one of your players. Uh, I think his name was Jackson McKay. <laughs> had about five touchdowns, an interception. Yeah, he, <laughs> he had a, a good, man among boys He had there. a good game at York. Proud of the boy. I heard his mom is quite an athlete, though. Yep, yep. She might get his, the, he might get his height from her. So Masseri on the punt from Fair, and Masseri returns it out to the 30. Takes a late shot, late push from the Ottawa player. Well, Western looking to put this one to bed. Up 19, 10, 24, and Todd, one more major, and I think it's lights out here. Yeah, let's see if I, I, I would suspect Western's going to want to do the same thing they did last series and just have a great distribution of balls and uh, a mix between run and pass down the field. And uh, right now, you know, you got to think that, that Ottawa's feeling this, and you know, they might be a little dejected. Hands are on hips, and, and Western is licking their chops ready to go. So if you're Ottawa, though, it's almost it's time to roll the dice. We're yeah. going to see a little bit of pressure. Yep. We're going to see a little bit of gambling by the Ottawa defense. Need to do something to change this momentum. Only 10 minutes to play in this game. So Hillick hands the ball off. Yazbek on a slow pace play. Oh, nice change of pace by Keanu Yazbek on that carry. Wow, that was well done by Yazbek. Yeah, let's see this replay. Just slow played it so well coming around the tackle. Yeah, yeah, waiting for his blocks, waiting for his blocks, and then there's the gap, and then a little shimmy step, you know, froze the halfback in his, uh, in his steps and took it out for another couple yards. So it's going to be nine yards on the carry. Mark Rondeau, the linebacker, was the one who was blown by. That's right, that was Yazbek. the linebacker, not the halfback. So Yazbek is the deep back, second and short. Receivers go in motion, takes the handoff, looking for a crease, and Yazbek is through, hurdles one, and Yazbek is taken down at about the 49-yard line, gains 10 on the play, and it's another first down for the Mustangs. He's saying to Keon Edwards, I'll see your hurdle and match you, and this one a little more athletic than Keon's. So it's first down, nine minutes to play coming up for the Mustangs, leading 36-17, great game next week. Don't want to go too far ahead. But the Mustangs travel down the 401 to take on the resurgent Windsor Lancers, who are undefeated, taking on Queens later this afternoon. Hillick, first down. There's Troy Thompson on the carry. 
Troy Thompson. The big man. Who is quite a load, about 5'11", 240. Troy Thompson gets eight yards as the Mustangs looking to go through the running back roster. Yeah, that's a physics lesson at work there. Mass and acceleration coming at you. He's a load to take down. Second down, almost two to go. Coleman is the up back. Troy Thompson is the deep back. Masseri is wide left. I Savon mean, Mangley Jones is the lone receiver to the right. <laughs> I, 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 just I know what Hillock's looking at right now. I don't know why he didn't throw it. I would have yeah. changed that play. Thompson carries the ball. He's dragged down, not until he gets to the <laughs> Ottawa 45. It's another eight yards for Troy Thompson. It's great to have. This is your third string running back. Just barely gets touched until he's well past the line of scrimmage, and you're starting to see hands on hips. Hands on knees, the big boys for Ottawa. Starting to get worn down here. Steady diet of the Mustang running attack. Unless you see more Savon isolated again. Hillock puts receivers in motion. Thompson on the carry, stutter steps. Bounces back, Troy Thompson oh. cuts it under. There's going to be a hold on the play. He's he's not quite as graceful as Yazbek at that little uh, juke step. Good. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> once he makes it, doesn't blow his, his ACL and keeps going. Seen a he carries ball a load. Change direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it bounces off the bumpers yeah, exactly. that I use. So it's going to be a hold on the Mustangs. So this will put the ball back at midfield. First down repeated. 7.29. So the final half of the fourth quarter, Western leads by 19, but looking to put this one away. One more major should do it. Yazbek is the deep back. Robertson is inside to the right. Savon Magnet jones runs over to join him. Robertson cuts back. Play action. Hillock looking for time. He's got Yazbek on the screen. He's Look got four men screen. out in front. And Yazbek... Has some room to run in Keanu Yazbek. Oh, he Bumbles. lost the ball. Yazbek did not hold on to it. And let's see if a Western lineman was able to fall on it. Four men leading the oh. blocking for the Mustangs there. And it looks like Western retained possession. And not just four regular men, four very large men, Eric Anderson Com and company. Well designed by the Mustangs, sending four out. Mason Jamal on the recovery of the fumble gets knocked out. And so first down for the Mustangs following the screen pass and fumble recovery. And the stick chain has problems again. So this will allow the players to catch their breath a bit. So play clock gets reset. 6.30 to play. First down Mustangs inside the 30-yard line. Troy Thompson's been impressive as the running back on this drive, although it was Keanu Yazbek on that screen pass. Ottawa bringing pressure on the reverse. There's Mason Jamal. Cuts it up. Jamal gets down to the 21-yard line. So gain a four on the play, maybe three on the play. Ottawa was bringing numbers. Looked like Western had a good call again. It just could not get around that last player and had to cut it up. Yeah, poor number 20 for Ottawa, Jerry DeLorme, just got swallowed up and smothered by the Western offensive line. That poor guy is going to feel that one tomorrow. DeLorme, a first-year player, has been involved in a number of oh. near misses today. At the bottom of a pile. So make it second down and three. Thompson on the carry. Picking his way through the line. Troy Thompson turns his shoulders north-south, gets down to the 12, and he keeps going, maybe down to the 10. So the Mustangs really starting to exert their will against this Ottawa defensive line. Troy Thompson, the third string running back, offers no break as he keeps his legs driving and he gets down to just outside the 10, make it the 11. Yeah, the running back from Chateau Gay, Quebec, is and quite the load. And there's an Ottawa player. So with an Ottawa player down, we'll take a timeout. 5.20 to play, and Western in control, leading the GGs 36-17. You're watching Mustangs Football on OUA TV.
First and 10 for the Mustangs as the injured Gigi has been cleared from the field. Mustangs looking to make it four of four. They thought they left a few too many points in the red zone last week. Not the problem this week, Todd. They've had four drives in the red zone. They've come away with four touchdowns. The fifth touchdown was from the 22-yard line on a quarterback keeper. Keon Edwards is a deep back. High snap, Edwards takes it, and he's got a lot of room, and Keon Edwards into the end zone touchdown. And he was very nice to hold Keon up. Keon Edwards decided to put the brakes on at about the three, get into the end zone, his second touchdown of the game. And the reigning Larry Haler Memorial Trophy winner as the OUA MVP has his second touchdown of the game. Yeah. High snap, and we just watch, not much there gets his foot from being distangled or disentangled from yeah. the defensive back, he's and it's 42-17. He's saying, I could have just buried you there, little guy. Get off my foot. Yeah. I got to go see my fans in the crowd. So Robertson with the hold, Garrity with the extra point, and with just under five minutes to play, the Mustangs now up 43-17. For all intents and purposes, Mr. McKay, this game – has been put to bed. It is in the books. Four drives in the second half of the Mustangs, four touchdowns. It started with a 17-yard catch for a Mawson Jamal. Seth Robertson had a 31-yard reception. Keon Edwards from one yard out on the last drive, and then Keon Edwards again from 11 yards out. And the Mustangs have expanded. It's, it was 14-10 at halftime. And the Mustangs have outscored them 29-7 to in the second half. As we said, must football is often a game of two separate and distinct halves. What worked, right? You prepare all week for the first half, and then you got 17 minutes to prepare for that second half. Yeah, and who can adjust better at halftime in the change room? No one is better in the OUA than the Mustangs making halftime adjustments. I, I would agree. So here's Brian Garrity teeing it up this time from the 45. Everyone was onside, according to Kevin Bickleborough. Takes a hop. Ottawa returns, starts at the 5. Oh. Stutter step at the 20. And that's where the GGs will start this next drive. They've turned it over on downs, had a couple of points, or a couple of punts, pardon me, just have not been as sharp in the second half as they were in the first half. And that's another big special team hit from number 47, Jude Buchanan. Jude He's Buchanan, first year linebacker. So Amakar Polk, who's had a good game as the running back, two touchdowns. Jansen still in at quarterback, four receivers to the right. Polk takes the handoff, Polk is through. Down after a gain of, let's make it eight yards. It's gonna be second down and two. 4.30 to play, I think, at this point. Not quite empty the benches, but it's one where, you know, you don't mind conceding a little yardage in, yeah. the in yeah, yeah. terms of safety. Yeah, this is where that bend dump brink comes in. You don't want them scoring on you, but you also don't want to take too many high-risk plays to, uh, to try and shut them down early. You know, give them five yards at a time. McLeod making a nice tackle on that five-yard or seven-yard run. So... In Waterloo, Laurier is leading Mac 28-9. Second down and short. Doesn't look like Polk gets back barely to the line of scrimmage. So it looks like it's going to be third down and two to go. So it Thank looks you. like Marcel Belfay is going to concede. As our good friend Dave Woody would say, they are showing their belly. <laughs> the punt formation with 3.42 to play. So Laurier will remain undefeated. Western will remain undefeated, but a good challenge. And let's see if Queens can bounce back from a tough loss last week. However, playing the resurgent Lancers down in Windsor at a 4 p.m. start. So fair on to punt. Down the middle, Masseri at his 32-yard line. And then Masseri loses his footing. Gain of only one. Ooh, you hate to see that as a returner. Just crushes the average. Yeah, well, you know, when you go down when you go down like that on a return, you hope that he didn't pull something or uh, you know, pop something. So yeah, just a slip on the turf, but you're right, that does kind of kill your average and he's had a good day so far. One of the things I think the Mustangs um, for a long time haven't had 
the greatest of return games that they didn't need to in a lot of ways. You know, just let's catch it, let's be secure, let's get our offense out there. But now they have some returners who are quite good. Yeah. And the Mustangs have a decided advantage in a lot of cases in the return game. Well, and as you know, special teams. So Rancourt is the quarterback on the first down play. Rancourt showing his wheels once again. Slides, takes a hit. Are they going to call the flag? No, they're not. So the quarterback slides feet first, gets hit. A little, a little mercy non-call for Ottawa. Yeah. Rancourt's not very happy, and Rancourt frankly, I don't blame him. Rancourt is not happy at all. Just because you're winning and just because you're a big guy doesn't mean you're open to taking those shots. Right. He slid purposefully, so he didn't get hit. We'll see if Murray Drinkwalter will take a look at that one again. So first and ten, nice read on that last play. Let's see if Rancourt goes back to it. Receivers in motion. Rancourt this time gives it to Thompson. Stutter step. Thompson's through the hole. Puts his shoulders down. Nice north-south run by Troy Thompson. Let's go back to the Rancourt replay. Just see the end of it, Todd. So he does a nice job on the read option. Turns his shoulders, gets upfield, goes down. I know to the average viewer, you're like, well, it was hardly. You're not supposed to hit the quarterback. At all. This is Whether what the it's rule in the is chest, in chest or in your head. You're Hurdle not the quarterback. Do everything you can to avoid the quarterback. And you know he's going to slide. Yeah. he. It was one yard into the slide. Second down. Thompson. Stutter steps. Looking for room. Thompson keeps his feet going. And Thompson dragged down, but not after a gain of four and a first down. Thompson gets the sticks moved. It'll be a first down for the Mustangs just at the 45-yard line. 2.26 to play. And unfortunately, there's a Mustang down, but let's take a look at the replay. Troy Thompson, good second effort there. Yeah, he was a, able to stay off the ground. I mean, his, his momentum had stopped, so they blew the, the play dead. But Keegan O'Neill, the third-year left guard, is the one. Looks like, I'm not sure if he was rolled up on. But this is a place where it's a good opportunity for your backups yeah. to get in and get some time. Not sure if the Mustangs. Yeah, I mean, the it's good. The good thing is O'Neill is walking off under his own power. Doesn't right. look. O'Neill, who's listed this week at 195 pounds. I think his right leg is 195 yeah, pounds. Yeah, obviously a typo. But good, good that Rancor is able to get in here and get some reps because, uh, you know, he has some good potential, and you might need him deep into the playoffs. That's or deep right. Into the Cole season. McBride is replacing Kigo O'Neill at the left guard as we're coming up to 220 to play. Receivers in motion. Rancourt pulls it back. Beautiful ride on the exchange. Jerome Rancourt. This is textbook read option by <laughs> Rancourt. Well, I think he's reading that everyone outside of the box is smaller than him, so he's just going to carry well, watch. it. Watch. Just... Yeah. Brings in the yep. defensive lineman Pulls perfectly. It. The defender crashes down on the running yeah. back, and off you go. So Rancourt with a touchdown already in this game. And I think has outgained Evan Hillock's career total. Oh. So here's Troy Thompson, who refuses to be tackled, gets down to the 24-yard line. Evan Hillock, however, has thrown for a million yards, doesn't need to run. Just. Yeah. <laughs> He'll do his talking with his arm. Yeah. So here's Troy Thompson. A little bit of a stutter step. Picks his way well, through the defensive that line. That was a previous play. That wasn't the last play. There it is. Boom. There you go. That's like a bowling game. And the white guys are the pins. So first down, 24. Play action. Rancourt looking to pass over the top. Oh, there's <laughs> no call on the play. So just looking for Xavier Allen, who went by his coverage and seemed to get. Yeah, it kind of got tied up there. I don't think it was enough up. for a call uh, or a flag, and they're not going to throw one at this point. But Well, I guess we saw from the quarterback call they're not going to throw <laughs> it. So the Mustangs are going to go to 5-0. and Ottawa will go down to 500 at 2-2. Two and two. A flag on the play. So it looks like, was it encroachment by Ottawa? Yes, it was. So touched a player. Ottawa, they're going to mark off, march off five yards. And now, second and five. How, how, how relieved are you when you see that, that a second and five play when you have to call as an OC versus a second and ten? Oh, right. Yeah, they, they sort of gave him a hank or a banjo or whatever teams call where they come up and sort of, you know, hard step you to try and pull you off. It's free five yards. 
Ottawa so tired they reacted. Rancourt quickly down the middle. He's got Rayshon Blake on the reception. Rayshon Blake down to the five-yard line. Just one step away from breaking it. So nice catch by Rayshon Blake. Yeah, he, he's a little upset with himself. He thought he could have had that into the end zone, but he slipped on the play. He had, he had two I defenders on him. But and the defender yeah. just looked like he clipped his foot. Yeah. So it's first down for the Mustangs at the four-yard line. Thompson is deep. Receivers go in motion. Thompson with the handoff. Stutter steps once. Thompson goes low. The point-seeking missile is able to get down to the one-yard line. Thompson's vision there, right? Doesn't look like there's much. Able to, you know, shift side to side and then just goes low trying to I'm, dive in. I'm not sure missile's the best way to describe Thompson. He's more of like sort of like uh, the little boy uh, bomb. He's, he's, he's robust enough. and sturdy. So second and short. Thompson to the left of Rancourt. Receivers go in motion. Thompson with the handoff. Thompson into the end zone. Touchdown, Troy Thompson. And good for Troy Thompson. He's done a lot of work in the uh, this series and uh, in the last. Uh, he's ground out some good yardage. So good for him to get paid off with a touchdown here late in the game. So with 107 to play, nice blocking up front by the Mustangs. And you can see on that play, Todd, the body language of the Ottawa defensive line. They're gassed. Yeah. Like they are completely gassed I don't hit at this, this point. I don't want to hit this bowling ball anymore. Yeah. So to make it the half century, here's Garrity. Robertson with the hold, and Garrity is through. And Western hits the 50-point mark, 50 to 17 now. And if we look at the far stands, remarkably still a good turnout this late in the fourth quarter yeah, of a game that is well out of hand now. Yeah, there's great fans. The fans have been fantastic this year, both home games so far. The students have stuck around for a while. And I'm quite certain that they have plans uh, immediately following this game from now until probably pretty late into the night. So good for them sticking around a little bit longer. My guess is Brofdale is going to get visited later on tonight. For those of you that don't know London well, Brofdale is a very popular street here in London, especially on homecoming. I'll tell you a quick Brofdale story in a second. 67 seconds left. We'll probably have time after this kickoff. Garrity, high, down to the 12. See, that's the kickoff yeah. when they had room. Right. Nice return by the GG trying to get wide. Oh, good job so containing the edge So a number of years there. ago doing this, and my niece is from Markham, and she had friends at Western, and she's coming down to Western Homecoming. And she's like, Uncle Thomas, can you pick me up? And then, you know, I'll drive her back, and we'll meet her parents. No problem. So I'm completely oblivious to what's going on, Todd, because we're at a football game calling a game. And I go over to Bruffdale, and the police are there. It looks like a bomb zone. There's no one. I roll up in my car. I roll down the window. The police officers, can I help you? I'm like, I'm just here to pick up my niece. And no, look at the age I am. They're like, oh, yeah, this guy's no trouble. Yes, sir, just go down there. <laughs> just <laughs> there was no problem at this age with this amount of gray in the beard, <laughs> thinking that I was going to cause any issue. They probably thought you were a police officer. Yeah, but as, <laughs> but as I say at this age, police officers are more like, can we help you, sir? Is there somewhere, is there <laughs> somewhere I can direct through? you to? Is there somewhere? Do you need instructions? We're at that age versus... Oh, you're including me in that category too? Well, you're close. Fair enough. You're close. Fair enough. As, as Western hits the half century mark, I believe you have as well. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so number 14, it's Matt Mahler, who's come in for short yardage situations for the GGs, in to take this final set of snaps. There's a fumble on the play. Are they going to say he was down? They're going to say complete, and the ground cannot cause the fumble. So it was Kerwin Geist with the catch on the play up to the 45-yard line. Yeah, the ground. Uh, definitely the I, turf caused that If we saw fumble. that in super slow-mo, <laughs> that may have been out before he was fully on the ground. However, at the OUA level, we don't have that luxury. Clock is moving. Just 40 seconds left. 
First and ten for the GGs. Handing the ball off. Suleiman Kamara, I believe, the running back. Number five getting his first carry of the game. Amakar Polk had the majority of carries for Ottawa. Had two touchdowns, leading rusher in the OUA, I think, with today's stats, even though Keon Edwards over well over 120 yards, I think Polk, thanks to that 59-yard run in the first quarter, will still remain as the leading rusher. Yeah, he's a good runner. Way. He's a lot of fun to watch. He's explosive, and he can make some great yeah. moves. In the Get him the ball in the open field on yeah. the screen. He did well. So Mahler back to pass as a receiver, bounces off one, interception. So Jordan Murphy on the pick, deflected. Murphy looking for room to run. Murphy has room to the outside. Murphy just takes a knee, and Murphy gets back to the midfield stripe. Interception by Murphy, and that's going to be the ball game on the final play. And it's the Mustangs who survive. A little early scare by the GGs, but pulled away in the second half with four touchdowns. Pardon me, five touchdowns in the second half. What was 14-10 after 30 minutes ends up being 50-17 to after 60 minutes. The Mustangs remain undefeated along with Laurier atop the OUA. Those two teams will meet in the final week of the season, but a great game coming up at 4 o'clock as the Queens Gales are down in Windsor to take on the undefeated Lancers and trying not to go 1-3 while well, the Lancers are looking to remain undefeated. So as the teams line up to shake hands, Mustangs, I think, Todd, I think, you know, tough to judge, Queens and Ottawa. I think Queens a little better overall mm -hmm. yep. than Ottawa, but I also thought this was an overall better performance from a Mustangs team. Homecoming crowd helped. You're at home. You don't have to travel. But I think the Mustangs, good bounce back game from a game they really escaped from and got the victory at Queens. Yeah, and I wouldn't suggest this game was a gimme against Ottawa either. I think Ottawa did a great job, particularly in the first half offensively, coming out and throwing the ball around. But, you know, Western was able to settle down. You know, maybe they kind of overlooked them a little bit, but did what they needed to do and what they wanted to do and what they need to do the remainder of the season by controlling the ball on both the ground and in the air and having those explosive plays to great players. Distribution. Distribution, but I think as well we saw the explosive plays especially. We were, we're so used to running backs and breaking that. But we saw, of course we know Savon Magnet-Jones, two-time All-Canadian, should be an All-Canadian again this year. Seth Robertson leads the OUA with seven touchdowns. Moss and Jamal has been terrific uh, becoming that, uh, you know, third player. So we've seen these guys, you know, just a great, great explosive second half. All right, well, let's go back to the truck and see if we can get the highlight package. Here's Amakal Poke in the first quarter. 59 yards as Poke went off tackle left and then just displayed breakaway speed. Fifth-year player from Hamilton. It was 7 nothing at that point. Savon Magne jones from seven yards out. It was an easy pitch and catch from Evan Hillick, and we were tied at 7. Ottawa scored a field goal, and then Western marched down. It was Jerome Rancourt on the quarterback keeper around the left end, and the big man with the point, 14-10, and that's where the score stood going in to halftime. In the second half, the Mustangs really exploded for five. First, it's Moss and Jamal. Nice little step over there by Jamal. 17 yards out from Hillock, capped off a 73-yard drive. Next, it's Seth Robertson. Mustangs on an 82-yard drive. This was 31 yards to Seth Robertson, his seventh of the season. Amakar Polk was able to score, making it 28-17. But the Mustangs were tough after that. It's first, Keon Edwards from one yard out. And then it is Keon Edwards from approximately 11 yards out. Puts on the brakes as he crosses the goal line. And then finally, we're going to see Troy Thompson from one yard out, the third string running back, able to take the handoff, pick his way into the end zone in the final minute of play. And Troy Thompson with the final major for the Mustangs, making it 50-17. to 17. Mustangs are on the road next week, taking on the Lancers. 
Ottawa playing the Panda Bowl next week against crosstown rival Carleton in what is always a fun game up in the nation's capital. Final thoughts before we head out to our own homecoming celebrations, Todd McKay, your thoughts on the uh, Mustang victory and really a dominant second half. Well, I think this is what they needed. They've had a few games the last few games where they did not get off to a good start and frankly were not very convincing in their victories. But now we finally get to see from Western what we expect to see from Western and what we'll want to and need to see from Western going forward. And that is a dominant performance on the ground and in the air and utilizing all their weapons. That'll do it for us from Western Alumni Stadium on behalf of our executive producer, Dan Durack, and our director is Nick McVickers. Our statistician extraordinaire up in the booth is Jake Williams. Thanks to the crew here for great coverage of today's game. Todd McKay is my partner. My name is Tom McConnell. Have yourself a great homecoming weekend. Western 50, Ottawa 17, and this has been Mustangs Football on OUA TV.